on the Purdue Global Sports Network. From Learfield, this is Boilermaker Basketball, brought to you by Purdue Global, Purdue's online university for working adults. University Bookstore, the official textbook provider for Purdue Athletics, and home to the original Purdue Pete. Purdue Basketball is brought to you in part by Purdue Federal Credit Union, the official credit union for Purdue fans, and by Unity Healthcare, your preferred healthcare partner for exceptional care. Purdue Boilermaker Basketball is on the air. Now, let's go courtside. From the State Farm Stadium in Glendale, Arizona, the road ends here. It's the 2024 NCAA National Championship title tilt between the number one ranked team in the country, the Connecticut Huskies, who are 36-3 on the season, and the third ranked team in the country, the Purdue Boilermakers, who are 34-4. Hi, everyone, and a pleasant good evening to you. Rob Blackman is my name, and we thank you so much for joining us in what will be the final game on the Purdue basketball schedule in 2023-2024. And the task for the Boilermakers is a monumental one. Not only knock off the number one team in the country, but also try to knock off the defending national champions and the UConn Huskies. My broadcast partner is Bobby Buckets Riddell. He joins me in just a moment. This is Purdue basketball. The Boilermakers this year are 10-0 against ranked opponents, but they have not faced a team the likes of the Connecticut Huskies who have been running roughshod over the rest of the competition here in this NCAA tournament. Their average margin of victory, 25 points. It's Connecticut and Purdue for the national title. When we come back, our pregame show moves full speed ahead. This is Boilermaker basketball on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. Unity Healthcare, a trusted pillar in the community for more than 25 years, offers healthcare services that you can depend on. With a team of over 80 highly skilled providers, Unity Healthcare is committed to making the best decisions for your health right here in your local community. Visit one of our many healthcare specialists or urgent care to meet your specific healthcare needs. www.unityhc.com because we believe in working together towards a healthier future. Unity Healthcare, healthier together. I get paid to do this. How cool is that? Wow. It's like you get paid to be a coach. And for me, I don't think there's a place out there better for me than Purdue University. Hi, I'm Kate Young, host of This is Purdue, the official podcast of Purdue University. Over the last three years, my conversations with Boilermakers have been serious, informative, and in the case of that exchange with former Purdue basketball coach Gene Cady and current head coach Matt Painter, downright fun. Be sure to follow This is Purdue on your favorite podcast app or on YouTube. If your company is seeking to relocate or expand quickly, Hancock County, Indiana has a wide variety of business sites, including four shovel-ready certified silver business parks, plus higher-than-normal broadband capacity with an extensive fiber network with more than 2,000 miles of lines. Connecting opportunity with success. Contact the Hancock County Economic Development Council at www.hancockedc.com or at 317-477-7241. At Farm Credit Mid-America and Rural First, we do more than lend. We lift up our rural communities that we serve, too. From our day-to-day -day business of providing reliable credit to farmers and rural residents, to our community investment efforts and scholarships for college students, we help Indiana's rural communities find their next level. Visit FCMA.com to learn more about how we work with partners like Purdue University. Boiler up. Farm Credit Mid-America and Rural First are equal opportunity lenders. Spring is here, and this is your time to venture out and re-emerge in a new versatile Ford SUV. Go anywhere and do anything in a Ford Escape, Explorer, Edge, or Bronco Sport. All with the capability, power, and tech that will help you forge new paths. Don't hold back. It's your time to hit the road. Get out there and experience it in a new Ford SUV. Go to buyfordnow.com and then head on over to your local Ford store today. 
Irma, family owned, women owned, serving Greater Lafayette for over 33 years. Shuttles to and from Indianapolis and O'Hare airports 365 days a year. Make your reservations now at LafayetteLimo.com. Charters of all sizes anywhere in the continental USA. Lafayette Limo, proud sponsor of Purdue Athletics. Just sit back and let us drive. There's no need to compromise your ride to relaxation. Lafayette Limo. Saturday night, we had a crowd of over 74,000 in the building at State Farm Stadium for Final Four action. We expect a similar crowd this evening for Purdue and UConn for the National Championship. Rob Blackman here with my broadcast partner, Bobby Buckets Riddell. Bob, win, lose, or draw, and I don't think there'll be a draw here tonight. The sad part about this one is once this one goes final tonight, this magical season will be over, regardless of how it finishes. That is sad, Rob. The finality of this season coming to a close is, is going to be tough, man. It's just, it's such a great group of guys, obviously a special team from a win-loss standpoint to see what this team had to deal with, you know, all offseason long after the heartbreak that occurred last March. For these, uh, for the coaching staff, for these guys on the team to come back stronger, better than ever, uh, and do what they've done this year has, been, has really been magical, to say the least. And, uh, you know, you and I, Wes Scott, a radio, radio engineer, we get so much joy from being able to travel on these road trips have uh, experiences with the coaching staff get to know those guys on a personal level and see how hard they work and for these guys to have their kind of moment here at the final four get that validation has been uh, special to see and hopefully uh, we have one more amazing moment in us six seniors putting on that purdue uniform for the final time tonight and they will be facing the toughest task of the season. I don't think there's any question about that. Now, Purdue has played a number one ranked team already this year. That was in December in Indianapolis. Purdue beating number one ranked Arizona at the time. But the Yukon Huskies, ranked number one currently, 36 and three, haven't lost a game since February the 20th, and that was a road game at Creighton. Yukon is a completely different beast. Best of the best in the NCAA this year. They are a well-oiled machine. There's no doubt about that. Just a lot of talented guys on their roster, of course. Uh, a good chunk of them returning from last year's national championship team. So not only are they talented, they got experience and they know how to win. They got a great coach in Danny Hurley, who's clearly a proven winner at this point. But when you look back at that Creighton win over these guys, I mean, Creighton played phenomenal that day. I mean, their shot making was through the roof obviously they're a very good home team on their home floor in Creighton uh, so you know to beat this team you got to play well right you can't just show up with your you know D plus C minus game and, and hope to to beat these guys right that's just not going to happen they're too talented too experienced too well coached so Purdue which I think everybody would admit you know did not have their best game against North Carolina State in the semifinal it was kind of a matchup that I felt like on paper favored Purdue and it ended up playing out that way where Purdue even with uh, you know, not their best night, was able to still win comfortably. But, uh, you know, Purdue's not going to be able to win that way against this UConn team. They're too good. So Purdue has got to be ready, got to be ready to bounce back from a, you know, slightly poor performance the other night and, and bring your uh, one of your best nights just like you did against Arizona, right? When you played them in Indianapolis, Purdue, uh, they balled out that day. Uh, the Purdue guards, you know, Fletcher Lawyer and Braden Smith both putting up big-time performances, 27 points apiece. And, uh, you know, Zach Eady, of course, we know what he does game in and game out. If he wants to have a special performance against another first-round pick in Donovan Klingon, that would not disappoint us at all. You look back at that Arizona win, Braden Smith, 26 points and three steals in that game. Fletcher Lawyer, 27 points, four steals in that game. The Purdue backcourt was just absolutely dynamite that afternoon in Indianapolis. One would think they'll have to put up similar performances against Arizona, or pardon me, against Connecticut, Certainly with Tristan Newton, the first-team All-American, playing in the backcourt for the Huskies. So much attention on Donovan Klingon at 7'2", facing off against Zach Eady at 7'4", but don't you feel like guard play will be a huge part of this game, even though most of the focus is going to be on the big guys? Yeah, most of the focus can be on the big guys, and rightfully so. And, and for Purdue to win, you know, Zach Eady, considering the number of the amount of one-on-one -on -one coverage he's probably going to see on Donovan Klingon and how many post touches he's inevitably going to get, Zach's going to have to have a good game, right? He's going to have to be efficient, go to work, and prove why he's National Player of the Year. But uh, the guard play is going to be pivotal as well. This UConn team, 
It's got so many dangerous weapons on the perimeter. Uh, you know, they can really play well in transition. They have four guys in their starting lineup who can all push the ball in transition, make threes, uh, attack the rim, facilitate for others. So Purdue's going to have to do a good job with their guards, taking good quality shots, taking care of the rock, uh, not allowing this UConn team to get out in transition. If Purdue can keep this in you know, a little bit more of a half-court game, Purdue obviously needs to be opportunistic in their own right, running uh, in the open floor, trying to get easy buckets before the defense is set. But I think Purdue, from a half-court defensive standpoint, can hold up against this UConn team obviously much better than they can if they're playing in transition all the time. So it's going to be fascinating to watch these two guards uh, on both ends match up. Tristan Newton on one end, first team All-American. Uh, he's going against Braden Smith. A guy who was first team all Big Ten, really made a massive jump from his freshman to sophomore year. Both those guys are stat sheet stuffers, right? Tristan Newton has four career triple doubles. Braden Smith has been so so darn close a couple times oh, uh, to getting the triple double for Purdue. Uh, so really, both those guys are going to be all over the place, affecting the game in different ways. And that's going to be one of those matchups, right? Which point guard gets the advantage could end up being a, a pivotal piece to, to who wins. Think about this, Cam Spencer in the starting lineup for the UConn Huskies. We know all about Cam Spencer from his couple of seasons at Rutgers. He's an 800, uh, 18, 1800 point career scorer, but he broke the Boilermaker hearts last year with that three from the top of the key in Mackey Arena. I was kind of hoping we would never see that guy again. Man, no kidding. It's funny how you know the transfer portal works and you know the offseason. We're always kind of looking at the other Big Ten teams and seeing how the rosters are going to shake up. And when I see Cam, on the bottom line of sport, you know, ESPN, Cam Spencer's entered his name in the transfer portal, you're throwing like a little party. You're like, yeah, <laughs> we're never going to see that guy because it pains for me, pains me to admit this, but I, I think Cam Spencer is, you know, just a stud, right? He's a heck of a player, affects the game um, in so many ways. He's got an endless motor. He's got that swagger. You know, you always see him doing the fist pumps out there when he's playing well. Like, he's just a gamer. And, you know, we got a guy in Fletcher Lawyer who's a gamer, too, in his own right, but... Yeah, I was really hoping to not have to see Cam Spencer again. And sure enough, after he breaks our heart in Mackey Arena last year with that game-winning three, we got to face him for all the marvels here tonight. In closing, both of these teams have been ranked in the top five all season long. Quite frankly, it rarely happens in the NCAA tournament that when you get to the final game, truly the two best teams are playing for the title. But that is how it has worked out this season. Yeah, that's really fun. I mean, in the NBA, you obviously see that a lot of times because over the course of best of seven series, uh, the cream rises to the top. But uh, in, in college basketball, the, NCAA, the way the NCAA tournament works, a lot of times the two best teams do not make it all the way there because of the way the neutral court works and just a one-game scenario. But uh, pretty neat that you're going to have the top two teams in the country who most people have said were the uh, best two teams get, get a chance to square off uh, two elite centers, a bunch of really good guards, two elite coaches, and uh, hopefully Coach Painter can join Danny Hurley as uh, national championship coaches. Last year, it was the UConn Huskies beating San Diego State to win the national title. The Huskies get a chance to go back-to-back, -back, first back-to-back -back opportunity since Florida won it in 2006 and 2007. The Boilermakers looking for their first NCAA National Championship in basketball. More of our pregame show when we return to Glendale, Arizona, the site of the National Championship game. This is Boilermaker Basketball on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. We got it. University Bookstore has you covered on all Purdue Athletic Sports apparel. Shop online at PurdueU.com. Anything and everything you need. Or visit us at our main location across from the Union and our stadium store across from Mackey Arena. You want it? We got it. Only at The official textbook source for Purdue Athletics. Keystone Cooperative is centered on delivering the farmer-owned cooperative of the future. Starting today, we're proud to be owned and operated by over 20,000 member owners. Keystone specializes in energy, home heat, agronomy, grain, animal nutrition, and swine production. And we remain centered on the valued relationships that have built and grown the cooperative for 100 years. Just like you, we're proud to back the boilers. Keystone Cooperative, centered on you. Talking on the phone is difficult if you've been exposed to loud noises over time. Combat veterans, factory workers, farmers, gun and motorcycle enthusiasts, 
can have trouble hearing on the telephone. Relay Indiana helps return clarity to your phone conversations. Relay Indiana also provides free loaned equipment to those who qualify. Get the CapTel Caption Telephone from Relay Indiana. Visit RelayIndiana.com now. Now's the time for a new Honda. Save thousands with 2.9% financing on a 2024 CRV. Full Honda inventory is here. Cars, SUVs, trucks, vans are all in stock. There's never been a better time to buy a new Honda. Save big with low payments or get your new Honda with 2.9% financing. Search your local Honda dealer today. See dealer for financing details for qualified buyers offer in 2024. Higher yield potential starts with the season-long systemic disease protection of Zyway brand fungicides from FMC. Zyway brand fungicides protect corn crops from key foliar diseases and support physiological benefits that help develop healthier, higher-yielding corn for a difference you'll appreciate at harvest. Visit your FMC retailer for an at-plant advantage. Always read and follow all label directions. The ticketing app for fans like the sideline shot caller. Come on, boys, pick up the pace. SeatGeek got him a great deal on seats right near the action. So when he yells, Where are you going? Block him! He can be absolutely sure the players heard him. SeatGeek handles the tickets to sports, concerts, and more. So fans can fan. It's Purdue and Connecticut, both are number one seeds. Connecticut representing the East Region, Purdue representing the Midwest. Purdue's three-pointers are brought to you by Case IH, a proud sponsor of Purdue basketball. Remember, you can't spell swish without IH. Purdue, second-best three-point shooting team in the country, 40.6% coming into this final game of the season, which is, well, exactly the number Purdue shot in the game Saturday night that went over North Carolina State. Not 40.6, but 40 to be exact, 40% three-point shooting for Purdue in that win on Saturday night. The Connecticut Huskies are a 36% three-point shooting team from the three-point line on Saturday night in their win over Alabama. They shot 10 of 25 from three, which is also 40%. One interesting note from that game, both Purdue and UConn shot the exact same number of threes made the exact number of threes and had the exact same percentage. Both were 10 of 25. Keep an eye on Cam Spencer. He's a 44% three-point shooter for the Huskies of UConn. When we come back, it's our Big Ten College Basketball Report. This is Boilermaker Basketball on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. I get paid to do this. How cool is this? Wow. It's like me getting paid to be a coach. And for me, I don't think there's a place out there better for me than Purdue University. Hi, I'm Kate Young, host of This is Purdue, the official podcast of Purdue University. Over the last three years, my conversations with Boilermakers have been serious, informative, and in the case of that exchange with former Purdue basketball coach Gene Cady and current head coach Matt Painter, downright fun. Be sure to follow This is Purdue on your favorite podcast app or on YouTube. We Boilermakers show our pride in a number of ways. From a Purdue flag flying high on game day to a black and gold tie worn to the office. That loyalty is built on precious memories, time-honored traditions, and lifelong friendships. It's everlasting, and it stays with you wherever you go. So whether you're at Mackey Arena, your hometown grocery store, or across the country, the pride is always there. And now with the Purdue Federal Visa Signature Card, you have one more way to show your pride. Purdue Federal, the official credit card for Purdue fans everywhere. Federally insured by NCUA. Unity Healthcare, a trusted pillar in the community for more than 25 years, offers healthcare services that you can depend on. With a team of over 80 highly skilled providers, Unity Healthcare is committed to making the best decisions for your health right here in your local community. Visit one of our many healthcare specialists or urgent care to meet your specific healthcare needs. www.unityhc.com because we believe in working together towards a healthier future. Unity Healthcare, healthier together. 
Hancock County, Indiana, located just 15 minutes from downtown Indianapolis near I-70 and I-465, is open for business. Learn why we are one of the fastest growing communities in Indiana. With access to available land, infrastructure, transportation, and a regional airport, join other national brands like Amazon, Carvana, and Walmart, and discover why we are the best-kept secret in central Indiana. This message brought to you by the Hancock County Economic Development Council. Visit us at HancockEDC.com or at 317-477-7241. Spring is here, and this is your time to venture out and re-emerge in a new versatile Ford SUV. Go anywhere and do anything in a Ford Escape, Explorer, Edge, or Bronco Sport. All with the capability, power, and tech that will help you forge new paths. Don't hold back. It's your time to hit the road. Get out there and experience it in a new Ford SUV. Go to buyfordnow.com and then head on over to your local Ford store today. Hi, Katie Geralds here, head women's basketball coach at Purdue University. I'm a proud graduate of our College of Liberal Arts. My degree prepared me to connect with people and communicate well on and off the court, skills I use every day. I'm excited about the Degree Plus program, which allows all Purdue students to earn a Bachelor of Science degree and one from Liberal Arts and still graduate in four years. This and one can be a game changer. Check out the College of Liberal Arts Degree Plus program to see if this and one is a winner for you. The Purdue fight song playing in the background as the Purdue Boilermakers have taken to the floor for the pregame warm-up ritual. This game is a 9-20 tip-off, fans. 9-20 Purdue and UConn. Rob Blackman here with Bobby Riddell. Time for our Big Ten report. We joked about this Saturday night. You get this deep into the season and you have to do a Big Ten report. There's just not much to talk about. Luckily, on the women's side, the Iowa Hawkeyes have given us plenty to talk about. Iowa's season, though, does come to an end yesterday, Sunday, playing in Cleveland in the national championship game, South Carolina beating Iowa 87-75. Caitlin Clark in her final game as an Iowa Hawkeye with 30 points and 8 rebounds. And, of course, many of you from the uh, Indianapolis area who follow the Indiana Fever know that... uh, seems like the Fever have uh, their eyes, uh, their hearts set on drafting Caitlin Clark number one in the upcoming WNBA draft. So a great career for Caitlin Clark comes to an end. Great season for Iowa comes to an end. And a great season for South Carolina comes to an end, too. South Carolina went 38-0, and 38-0 and in women's hoops and winning it all this year. What, uh, what a run for them. Bob, I was thinking about this, too, actually last night. We have spent all this time this year in our Big Ten report talking about our 14 teams that are in the Big Ten. We spent very little time, especially once we got to the postseason, even mentioning that, well, in just a couple of months, technically, we'll welcome Washington, Oregon, USC, and UCLA on board. Yes, we will. That is going to be fascinating just to see how that expansion goes uh, regarding lots of things, scheduling, uh, travel logistics, uh, just <laughs> yes. the way things impact the Big Ten tournament. As we know, some of the teams, is it four, correct? Four of the 18 teams will not advance to the Big Ten tournament in, in men's correct. basketball uh, when those teams join next season. So, yeah, it's a little bit like uh, soccer Premier League relegation type stuff, right? It, uh, you don't, if you're not uh, near, you know, the top 14 teams, you don't get a, a chance to play for the for the championship. And uh, you're going to get relegated to, to not watching. I think I, be, I believe Big Ten baseball does operate that way as well. Right. Yeah, so all, all the, the teams, teams do not make it. Correct. Yeah, so that's going to be interesting. Obviously, traveling out west. We do know that Purdue will be traveling out west uh, only once. So we will play, uh, I guess you would think, either a Washington, Oregon, or you would play the USC, UCLA double dip. Uh, go out there, probably do a you know Friday, Sunday, Thursday, Saturday kind of situation and come back. But... Of course, those four teams are, are going to have a more difficult travel situation on yeah. their hands as they will probably have to travel east, we think, at least three or four separate times. So uh, definitely if you're one of the core uh, 14 members, or especially if you're a Midwest uh, Big Ten member, you're going to have a much better situation travel-wise. But, uh, yeah, that's going to be fascinating. You and I will yeah, be heading out west a couple times next year since we'll be playing in San Diego as right. well. Over Thanksgiving, yes. Over Thanksgiving, uh, one of the teams in that tournament, by the way, Arkansas. So it looks like we're that? playing John Calipari, wow. it looks like. Uh, we, might, we might be squaring off with Coach Cal. I remember uh, when I went to the Maui Invitational as part of the, the Purdue team my sophomore season, 
we saw Coach Cal out there as well, but at that point he was the head coach of the Memphis right. Tigers. So, yep, Coach Cal, we will likely once again uh, get a chance to face off with him in San Diego. Might see Micah Shrewsbury too because Notre Dame is in that four-team field as well. During the Thanksgiving week, that is in San Diego. That's a long way away from where we are right now, the first Monday in April, the national championship game between Purdue and Connecticut. When we come back to the pregame show, Bobby Riddell will sit down with assistant coach Sasha Stefanovic. It's time for a scouting report segment brought to you by Purdue Global. This is Boilermaker Basketball on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. Lafayette Limo, family-owned, women-owned, serving Crater Lafayette for over 33 years. Shuttles to and from Indianapolis and O'Hare Airports, 365 days a year. Make your reservations now at LafayetteLimo.com. Charters of all sizes anywhere in the continental USA. Lafayette Limo, proud sponsor of Purdue Athletics. Just sit back and let us drive. There's no need to compromise your ride to relaxation. Lafayette Limo. That to-do list you have needs one more thing. Chill. It's an easy thing to do. Just crack open an ice-cold Coors Light and chill. Take the afternoon off and binge watch anything. Go to happy hour and stay for a couple hours. Who's counting anyways? Or hang out with just your dog because you've had enough human interaction this week. Whatever you do, do it with a Coors Light. Mountain cold refreshment made to chill. 2024 Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Celebrate responsibly. Hey, Purdue fans, say hello to the most powerful gallon in agriculture from BW Fusion and say goodbye to traditional crop nutrition. We've simplified product selection to create a personalized gallon that's crafted for your specific crop, problem areas, budget, and more. It enhances your farm's profitability, 30-plus years of crop nutrition data, and industry leadership. Build your most powerful gallon in ag with BW Fusion today at mpga.ag. Let's get back to the action. Boiler up. University Bookstore is the official textbook source for Purdue Athletics and the home of the original Purdue team. Cash in on three-point Thursdays with Purdue men's and women's basketball. When Purdue scores, so do you. With winning home games, you can save up to 39% on in-store purchases. Gear up for game days with the number one fun place for Purdue. University Bookstore, two locations, State Street, and across from Mackey Arena. It's University Bookstore. Water damage from a busted pipe can be a real nightmare in these frigid temps. For over 40 years, Hayes & Sons has been restoring water damage in Indiana homes and businesses. They'll help you navigate your insurance claim and get your life back on track. So, when a water disaster strikes, tell your insurance agent you want Hayes & Sons for your restoration work. Visit HayesAndSons.com for more information. Domino's Mix and Match menu has items for every occasion. Flaked on your friend's open mic night? Flaky bread twists and molten lava cake should do the trick. Soccer team duty? Medium two-topping pizzas and stuffed cheesy bread are your best defense. Is it your dog's half birthday? <laughs> Celebrate his biggish day with savory sandwiches and tender specialty chicken. Mix and match two or more items for $6.99 each at Domino's. Ask for this offer two item minimum prices, participation, delivery area, and charges may vary. Bone and wings, bread bowl, pasta, and pan pizza will cost extra. Local stores have delivery fees and can charge extra for some menu items. And we are back here on the pregame show where today the number one seed from the Midwest region, Purdue Boilermakers, will be taking on the number one seed from the East region, the Yukon Huskies, here in the 2024 National Championship from Glendale, Arizona. It's time now for our scouting report segment presented by Purdue Global, Purdue's online university for working adults. I'm joined now by assistant coach Sasha Stefanovic. And coach, we have uh, reached our first national championship appearance since 1969. So for you, how does it feel to be part of this coaching staff that's helped Purdue reach this point? Yeah, it's amazing. Obviously, you know, uh, being a player here, it's like that was the ultimate goal as a player to get to this, you know, Final Four in a national championship and uh, hopefully win it for the program and university and, um, <clears throat> you know, everybody that's involved with Purdue. But now being on this side of things, it's just, just equally as rewarding. And it's really, really cool to see all the work that, our guys have put in and uh, coaching staff all the people in the behind the scenes or whatever make this program go um, it's really cool for us to finally get to this stage and play the best of the best you know it's the two best teams all year <clears throat> um, trying to win a national title and it's really really cool that 
uh, we were given this opportunity. When it comes to excitement, the Purdue fan base is definitely feeling that. Uh, it's been exciting for us to see you know, how many uh, Purdue fans have been able to make it out here to Phoenix. What's it been like for you to see just the support that we're getting along this journey? Yeah, it's it's honestly, it's unbelievable. Obviously, we know that um, we have a, a great fan base and one of the best in the country, and you see it every night in Mackey Arena, but even when you're on the road in the Big Ten, you always see uh, you know Purdue fans uh, showing up wherever we're at, but to see it on this scale and, and to and this stage where we're playing in 74,000, you know, stadium, and it feels like majority of them are Purdue fans, which is really cool to see, and it's really tremendous to... to to see how many people came out to Phoenix and uh, it feels like all the streets are just packed with Purdue people and Purdue fans and um, it's it's really cool and um, I'm just very thankful that you know I'm a part of this you know program and university all right well on to tonight's opponent the UConn Huskies Uh, obviously a terrific team as as you said earlier they're led by head coach Danny Hurley Uh, they defeated Alabama and the other national semifinal on Saturday and this program is trying to do something pretty special on their own right, right? We're trying to do something special, you know, kind of pull off that Virginia where you come back uh, from the previous year, losing to a 16 seed and uh, be a national champion the following year. Well, they're trying to do something that hasn't been done since 06 and 07 when the Florida Gators repeated as national champion. For you, looking at this matchup tonight, how excited are you to think about playing against just another elite team uh, in the NCAA? Yeah, it's what's, what it's all about, right? I, I think for us to win a national title, it there feels no other way than having to go through UConn. Obviously, they're the other best team all year. You know, we've been one and two. You know, Houston's in that mix, too. But um, for us to be on this on this stage against them, it just feels right. Like, if you want to win a national title, you're going to have to beat the best of the best. And we're both, you know, those, those two best teams. So that's really, uh, you know, a cool thing for us. Coach Hurley is obviously, you know, an elite-level coach. They have some really, really talented players super tough well coached um and so are we so it's it's really a a great battle i think it's a great matchup between individual players and and you know offenses i think we both do a lot of you know similar things and and we execute at a high level so it's um it's honestly this is like you can't ask for much more if you're a college basketball fan but also just a person within uh basketball this is uh what you wanted to see all right looking at this uconn team defensively they're pretty formidable Uh, They have a top 10 field goal percentage defense and just a top 10 scoring defense in general. What is it about their defensive unit that makes them so formidable? Yeah, I think it starts with their guards and their ball pressure and, um, you know, how they want to take you out of things, right? They want to take away your catches. They want to push you out. They don't want you to catch it on the arc. Um, They're really good at collapsing in the paint on drives and and then, um, you know, running you off the line so you're not getting open threes as well. And then it's and you know and the, and the other part of their defense is that secondary help, obviously with Klingon at the rim, and he's such a good rim protector. And I think he's really shown that in the NCAA tournament how well he could guard the rim um, and block shots or just chain shots in general. But um, you know, luckily for us, obviously we have Zach, so we're going to throw the ball in as as much as we can inside and um, try to get some either early fouls on Klingon or just get some easy easy buckets if they're going to stay one on one. But um, they're they're obviously super super talented on that that end of the floor. They they really get into the ball. They're going to make things difficult. But I think if we execute at a high level with our pace and timing of our sets, um, you know I think we'll be able to to score. Well, we've also been playing some really good basketball on the defensive end of the floor as well. In our five wins here in the NCAA tournament, we've held each opponent under seventy points. Uh, feels like we're kind of playing some of our best defensive basketball at the right time. Well, now looking at this UConn team, a lot of talented players. What's the key to slowing them down uh, on our defensive end? Yeah, they're they're very similar to us. Like I said, in the offensive side, they run a lot of different things. They run a lot of actions, and um, their their offense is actions to actions to actions to get to something right. And that's kind of what we do in the, in a similar sense. Um, <clears throat> so for us defensively, I think it's more just um, sticking to our principles, taking away certain things that they want off of quick hitters or. Um, anything like that, but really, what it is is transition defense for us. They're, they they kill teams in transition. They're they're super talented, and and um, you know they want to get out and, and get in transition and get easy buckets and easy layups and dunks and open threes, and uh, that's kind of what gets them going. So, I think if we could set our defense and take good shots offensively, not turn the ball over, um, you know, and set our defense, I think that's really going to help us get into the rhythm of the game and you know hopefully get some stops uh, on that end.
All right, Coach. Good luck. Go, good luck tonight. Go get one. Sweet. Thank you very much. That is assistant coach Sasha Stefanovic. What a great job he has done as a young coach on this staff this season. Our Purdue Global Scouting Report. When we come back, scoreboard update with Bobby Riddell as we are getting you closer and closer to the tip. 920, fans, 920, just about 30 minutes from right now, Purdue and UConn for the national title. This is Boilermaker Basketball on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. We boiler makers show our pride in a number of ways. From a Purdue flag flying high on game day to a black and gold tie worn to the office. That loyalty is built on precious memories, time-honored traditions, and lifelong friendships. It's everlasting, and it stays with you wherever you go. So whether you're at Mackey Arena, your hometown grocery store, or across the country, the pride is always there. And now with the Purdue Federal Visa Signature Card, you have one more way to show your pride. Purdue Federal, the official credit card for Purdue fans everywhere. Federally insured by NCUA. If you're a Boilermakers fan, you know that scoring big is everything. Few things feel as good as watching your team pass, shoot, and dribble their way to victory. Off the court, you can experience that same feeling with a Magnum tractor from Case IH. Magnum tractors match the power, speed, and strength of the best Boilermakers by helping you net every challenge that comes your way. Score big with a Magnum tractor this season by visiting your local Case IH dealer or go to caseih.com slash Boilermakers to learn more. Boiler up! U.S. Foods and the Purdue Boilermakers. What a recipe for success. Like Purdue, we both stand for quality and value. From our state-of-the-art Indianapolis-based distribution center, we at U.S. Foods are committed to meeting our customers' needs by providing all your quality food service and equipment products throughout all of Indiana and Northern Kentucky. It's what we do to bring guests into your business every day that makes the difference. Enjoy the game and remember, U.S. Foods, the official food service supplier of Purdue Athletics. This is Mason Gillis, Purdue men's basketball. For my friends at the Haldeman Companies, proud supporters of Purdue University. They use the same principles for success that Coach Panner teaches us. The importance of teamwork, execution, and tremendous effort are keys to success. Their team includes farm managers, appraisers, and real estate brokers with the experience, knowledge, and professionalism to help you accomplish your farm goals. Since 1930, if it has anything to do with the business of farming, Haldeman can help. Visit Halderman.com to learn more. Now's the time for a new Honda. Save thousands with 2.9% financing on a 2024 CRV. Full Honda inventory is here. Cars, SUVs, trucks, vans are all in stock. There's never been a better time to buy a new Honda. Save big with low payments or get your new Honda with 2.9% financing. Search your local Honda dealer today. See dealer for financing details for qualified buyers offer in 4324. Seagate's the ticketing app for fans like the sideline shot caller. Come on, boys, pick up the pace. Seagate got him a great deal on seats right near the action, so when he yells, Where are you going? Block him! He can be absolutely sure the players heard him. Seagate handles the tickets to sports, concerts, and more, so fans can fan. Welcome back here to the pregame show where Purdue will be taking on the UConn Huskies here in the national championship game from Glendale, Arizona. The tip is set for 9.20 Eastern time. Time now for our out-of-town score segment. And we'll first start off with taking a look at the score from yesterday's women's national championship game where we did have a Big Ten team in the mix, and that was the Iowa Hawkeyes but they do fall to the South Carolina Gamecocks, 87-75. to The Gamecocks end up going undefeated on the season. Caitlin Clark for Iowa does put up an impressive 30 points and 8 rebounds in a losing effort. She will, of course, most likely be the number one pick in the upcoming WNBA draft. And the uh, Indiana Fever have that number one pick, so that should be exciting for everyone in Indiana to have Caitlin Clark come to the state to play some professional basketball. As far as the men's side, the final four scores from Saturday, you had the Yukon Huskies taking down the Alabama Crimson Tide, 86 to 72. Yukon, the one seed in the East region, Alabama, the four seed uh, coming from their region. And then in the 
Other semifinal, the 11 seed NC State. They fall to Purdue 63 to 50. And that's led us to tonight where you have the championship matchup between UConn and Purdue. Should be a great one. When we return to the pregame show, we will have Coach Painter's pregame comments presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union. This is Boilermaker Basketball on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. Hey, Purdue fans. Say hello to the most powerful gallon in agriculture from BW Fusion and say goodbye to traditional crop nutrition. We've simplified product selection to create a personalized gallon that's crafted for your specific crop, problem areas, budget, and more. It enhances your farm's profitability, 30-plus years of crop nutrition data, and industry leadership. Build your most powerful gallon in ag with BW Fusion today at mpga.ag. Let's get back to the action. Boiler up. Franciscan Health is proud to be the official medical provider for Purdue Athletics. Does a sudden sports injury have you on the bench? We can assist. Franciscan Health sports medicine specialists have mastered a team approach to sports injuries. You'll have access to a network of orthopedic professionals, rehabilitation services, and highly advanced technologies and treatments to get you back out on the field. To learn more, visit franciscanhealth.org slash sportsmedicine. Domino's Mix and Match menu has items for every occasion. Flaked on your friend's open mic night? Flaky bread twists and molten lava cakes should do the trick. Soccer team duty? Medium two-topping pizzas and stuffed cheesy bread are your best defense. Is it your dog's half birthday? <laughs> Celebrate his biggish day with savory sandwiches and tender specialty chicken. Mix and match two or more items for $6.99 each at Domino's. Ask for this offer two item minimum prices, participation, delivery area, and charges may vary. Bone and wings, bread bowl, pasta, and pan pizza will cost extra. Local stores have delivery fees and can charge extra for some menu items. You work hard, and at First Farmers Bank and Trust, we work hard for you. Since 1885, we've committed to helping families, businesses, and communities thrive financially, from home to the office, to the field, to the arena. We value hard work and perseverance as much as you do. Experience banking built on heart and grit today. Learn more at ffbt.com. First Farmers is a proud sponsor of Purdue Athletics. Member FDIC, Equal Opportunity Lender. Talking on the phone is difficult if you've been exposed to loud noises over time. Combat veterans, factory workers, farmers, gun and motorcycle enthusiasts can have trouble hearing on the telephone. Relay Indiana helps return clarity to your phone conversations. Relay Indiana also provides free loaned equipment to those who qualify. Get the CapTel Caption Telephone from Relay Indiana. Visit RelayIndiana.com now. Water damage from a busted pipe can be a real nightmare in these frigid temps. For over 40 years, Hayes & Sons has been restoring water damage in Indiana homes and businesses. They'll help you navigate your insurance claim and get your life back on track. So, when a water disaster strikes, tell your insurance agent you want Hayes & Sons for your restoration work. Visit HayesAndSons.com for more information. Back to State Farm Stadium, everyone, and good evening to you. Championship Monday, Purdue and Connecticut. Let's talk to head coach Matt Painter. His pregame comments are presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union. Purdue Federal Credit Union, proud to be the official credit union for Purdue fans. Discover the credit union difference at PurdueFed.com. Uh, coach, before we talk about uh, the task at hand, just a quick thought on Saturday night's win over North Carolina State. Impressive that despite having 16 turnovers, only getting three points from your second leading scorer, Braden Smith, and only shooting 40% as a team field goal percentage, you still found a way to win. That was a grinder. Yeah, no no question about it. You know, I thought defensively holding them to 21 points in the second half, you know, was huge. Obviously, we did not score a lot, but we were able to grind it out. And being able to make 10 threes obviously helped me just kind of getting Zach established you know, in there, and you mentioned Braden. You know, Braden did some other really good things in there, but, you know, it wasn't one of his better games. So to be able to win in the semifinals to get to the national championship game, and it wasn't one of his, you know, better games, you know, it kind of shows you we, we have a good team, we have a deep team. Um, but we, we just got to have balance. We got to keep defending. We got to have balance. Obviously, we need to have more cracks at it. You know, having 16 turnovers, that gets us in our, in our statistical war at, at 7-4 and four when it's more than 13. 
um, 27 and 0 when it's 13 or less. So we love tonight to be able to spin that, you know, and, and have around 10 turnovers. All right, the Connecticut Huskies, 36 and 3 on the season, and the overall number one seed for this NCAA tournament. It is no, it is no surprise that they have found their way here to Championship Monday. Because quite frankly, if we're all being honest with one another, since this season opened up way back in November, they have clearly been uh, the best ball club consistently in college basketball. Yeah, you know, obviously national champs, um, you know, had a, had a great year, uh, battled a part of the season when Klingon was out, and they, they still are really successful. It just shows you, you know, how good they are. But they're very athletic. They're, they're a great defensive team. They're a great rebounding team. Offensively, they run a lot of good stuff. They have a lot of different weapons. They really kind of have two units. Like when they sub, the energy really picks up with a couple guys who really come in. They get more aggressive on ball screens. They really put pressure on the ball. They have three or four guys that can really, really put pressure on the basketball. And that's how they have those runs. That's how they had that 30-0 run against Illinois to where their defense leads to offense, and that's going to be so important for us. Number one thing with them is transition defense, and that starts with us taking good shots and taking care of the basketball. We do that, we can get our defense set. If not, then you're you're playing from behind, they get numbers, they get those breaks, and then they're really hard to stop. You know, because Connecticut's only lost three games all year, I would assume it's kind of hard to find uh, where they might have some deficiencies. You can only find three games where they actually lost, but... Obviously, they are not perfect in the games where they have struggled. What has the opponent done well? I think from a defensive standpoint, uh, they, they've, they've made it really hard on them. And, um, you know, we watched the Creighton game. We watched the Kansas game. Kansas game was more of a grinder. Creighton really scores the basketball, runs a lot of good stuff, executes, makes shot. When you, you don't get great shots against them, but you but when you do, you got to make them. <laughs> and that's, you know, that, that's pretty hard. It's not something you can just talk to your team about. Hey, when you're open, make sure you make them. It just doesn't kind of work that way. But when you're dealing with a team that is successful as they've been defensively, um, you know, it's, it's, it's very important for us. We got to be able to get them on the glass. We got to be able to take care of the basketball. Like I said, we got to keep those turnovers around 10, and then we got to be able to, you know, get them on the glass, dominate them on the glass. If we can do those things, we're going to put ourselves in a position to win. Coach Painter, thank you, and good luck here tonight. All right, thank you. Coach Matt Painter joining me. His thoughts on the Connecticut Huskies. Coach Painter's pregame comments presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union. Purdue Federal Credit Union, proud to be the official credit union for Purdue fans. Discover the credit union difference at PurdueFed.com as the Boilermakers come racing on to the playing surface from our left. Before we move any further, we're at the top of the hour. Let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is Boilermaker Basketball from Learfield. When we come back, Bobby Riddell has a look at our keys to the game presented by FMC. This is Boilermaker Basketball on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. Hi, Katie Geralds here, head women's basketball coach at Purdue University. I'm a proud graduate of our College of Liberal Arts. My degree prepared me to connect with people and communicate well on and off the court, skills I use every day. I'm excited about the Degree Plus program, which allows all Purdue students to earn a Bachelor of Science degree and one from liberal arts and still graduate in four years. This and one can be a game changer. Check out the College of Liberal Arts Degree Plus program to see if this and one is a winner for you. U.S. Foods and the Purdue Boilermakers. What a recipe for success. Like Purdue, we both stand for quality and value. From our state-of-the-art Indianapolis-based distribution center, we at U.S. Foods are committed to meeting our customers' needs by providing all your quality food service and equipment products throughout all of Indiana and Northern Kentucky. It's what we do to bring guests into your business every day that makes the difference. Enjoy the game and remember, U.S. Foods, the official food service supplier of Purdue Athletics. 
Unity Healthcare, a trusted pillar in the community for more than 25 years, offers healthcare services that you can depend on. With a team of over 80 highly skilled providers, Unity Healthcare is committed to making the best decisions for your health right here in your local community. Visit one of our many healthcare specialists or urgent care to meet your specific healthcare needs. www.unityhc.com because we believe in working together towards a healthier future. Unity Healthcare, healthier together. You want it? We got it. University Bookstore has you covered on all Purdue athletic sports apparel. Shop online at purdueu.com. Anything and everything you need. Or visit us at our main location across from the Union and our stadium store across from Mackey Arena. You want it? We got it. Only at University Bookstore. The official textbook source for Purdue athletics. On the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield, Boiler Maker Basketball is brought to you by Indiana Kitchen Premium Pork Products. Get to know us at indianakitchen.com. Also brought to you by Coors Light, made to chill. Proud sponsor of the Purdue Boilermakers. The tip is moments away. This is Boiler Maker Basketball. Time now for our keys to the game. What does it take for Purdue to win a national championship in men's basketball? Let's find out. The keys are brought to you by FMC. Get season-long disease protection from the inside out with Zyway brand fungicides from FMC. Thanks, Rob. Let's get to it here. Key number one, I'm looking at Donovan Klingon and his defensive impact for the Huskies. Going to be pivotal in this game because, of course, Purdue has Zach Eady. And we know how often the Boilermakers like to jam that thing down to Big Z in the post area. The way UConn defends is they leave their post players one-on-one -on, -one on the block. They like to stay home with the perimeter players, take away three-point shooters. And so Zach Eady, more often than not, you would think here tonight, based on that defensive principle, is going to have one-on-one -on -one chances against Klingon. How can Klingon hold up defensively in that one-on-one -on -one scenario? Is he able to defend without fouling? Make it hard for Zach Eady. Not allow Zach to get deep post touches. Make him score over the top. And that will come down to Zach Eady and his skill level and how on his game is he tonight. But also what Klingon provides is from a secondary defender standpoint, the coaching staff for Purdue thinks he is elite as a secondary defender, which he certainly is. He comes over one of the best shot blockers in the country, averaging 2.65 shots blocked per game. And what they do from a transition offense standpoint is elite. And a lot of times that is initiated by Donovan Klingon and his help side defense coming over from the weak side, blocking shots. And that ignites that great fast break for the Huskies. Purdue, when they drive, have to be cognizant and aware of where Klingon is at all times. Cannot allow him to impact the game with his shot blocking. Got to make sure you play off two feet and find Zach Eady and shooters if he comes over on the help side on drives. Second key, the turnovers. It's been this way the entire tournament for Purdue. And they were fortunate in the semifinal against the Wolfpack to not lose that game with 16 turnovers. The other four tournament games for Purdue, they've had 10 or less, which has been very nice to see. Uh, Purdue now 7-4 and four when they do have that 14-17 to 17 turnovers. But I'm, I fear if you get up in that 14-17 to 17 number here today against a team like UConn, you could be in big trouble. The good news for Purdue is UConn is not a great team at forcing turnovers. Slightly over 10.5 turnovers forced per game. That's 288th in the country. They only turned Alabama over last game eight times. And so Purdue, if they can take care of the ball, they're in good shape. Both these teams are elite from a rebounding standpoint. Purdue, the second rebound margin team in the country. UConn, fifth. And then when you look at that third and final key, you have Braden Smith, the complete X factor for the Purdue Boilermakers. He really needs to elevate his game here tonight. He's had eight games this year with 18 plus points, did not have his best effort the previous game. Jonathan Klingon gonna be in that drop ball screen coverage. Brayton's gotta look to attack that, look for a shot first and foremost. If it's not there, if they take it away, then look to pass to Zach Eady or others. He's shown the ability to play great defense as well. He's gonna have that Tristan Newton assignment tonight. He's done a great job on Tyson Walker before. Can you defend without fouling on a great player like Tristan Newton? That's it for the pregame show. Our final pregame show of the season. Just one task left. Win 
the national championship. Our starting lineups presented by Hayes and Sons along with the opening tip-off when we come back to the State Farm Stadium in Glendale, Arizona. Purdue and Connecticut for the biggest prize of them all in college hoops. This is Boilermaker Basketball on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. That to-do list you have needs one more thing. Chill. It's an easy thing to do. Just crack open an ice-cold Coors Light and chill. Take the afternoon off and binge watch anything. Go to happy hour and stay for a couple hours. Who's counting anyways? Or hang out with just your dog because you've had enough human interaction this week. Whatever you do, do it with a Coors Light. Mountain cold refreshment made to chill. 2024 Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Celebrate responsibly. Keystone Cooperative is centered on delivering the farmer-owned cooperative of the future. Starting today, we're proud to be owned and operated by over 20,000 member owners. Keystone specializes in energy, home heat, agronomy, grain, animal nutrition, and swine production. And we remain centered on the valued relationships that have built and grown the cooperative for 100 years. Just like you, we're proud to back the boilers. Keystone Cooperative, centered on you. SeatGeek's the ticketing app for fans like the sideline shot caller. Come on, boys, pick up the pace. SeatGeek got him a great deal on seats right near the action, so when he yells, Where are you going? Block him! He can be absolutely sure the players heard him. SeatGeek handles the tickets to sports, concerts, and more, so fans can fan. You know you've got a comeback in you. When you take the next step, you're going to make it count for your career, for your family, for your life. You can earn a degree you're proud of with Purdue Global. Purdue Global is backed by Purdue University, one of the nation's most respected and innovative public universities. This is your chance. This is your opportunity. This is your comeback. Purdue Global, Purdue's online university for working adults. Start your comeback today at purdueglobal.edu. On the Purdue Global Sports Network, from Learfield, Boilermaker Basketball is brought to you by your Central Indiana Honda dealers are proud to be longtime fans and supporters of Purdue Athletics. Also brought to you by University Bookstore, the official textbook provider for Purdue Athletics and home to the original Purdue Pete. Purdue UConn for the national championship starts now. Purdue Boilermaker Basketball is on the air. You hear the applause from 70,000 plus inside of State Farm Stadium. Our national anthem has just been performed, which means we now are just nine minutes away from tip-off. Purdue and Connecticut for the 2024 National Championship. Time now for our starting lineups presented by Hayes and Sons, helping Boilermakers restore their property damaged by fire, water, mold, or storms for over 42 years at Hayes and Sons. We do restoration right. The Connecticut Huskies are ranked number one in the country. They're the number one overall seed in this year's NCAA men's basketball tournament. 36-3 and three on the season, and here's how they will go. In the backcourt, first-team All-American Tristan Newton, a 1,500-point career scorer, 6'5", 195-pound grad student from El Paso, Texas, originally started his career at East Carolina. Bob mentioned this earlier in the pregame show, four career triple-doubles for Tristan Newton. This season averaging 14.9 points, 6.6 rebounds. He has 37 steals, shoots 80% at the foul line. Oh, and by the way, dishes out 6.2 assists per game. Joining him in the backcourt will be Cam Spencer, 6'4", 205-pound grad student from Davidsonville, Maryland. Started his career at Loyola, Maryland, and then was at Rutgers for a couple of seasons. Purdue fans, we remember Cam Spencer at Rutgers. He was an all-Big East first-team performer this year. 1,800 points for Cam Spencer in his storied career. He is 
averaging 14.4 points this year, 4.8 rebounds. He has 57 steals, shoots 44% from three and 91% from the foul line. The forwards are Stefan Castle, 6'6", 215 pound freshman from Covington, Georgia. A McDonald's All-American as a high school player. He matched a career high with 21 points against Alabama on Saturday night in the national semifinals. Castle averages 11 points, 4.7 rebounds a game. Joining him as a forward, Alex Caravan, 6'8", 220 pound redshirt sophomore from Southboro, Massachusetts. He transferred in from Cal State Fullerton. He was the Big East sixth man of the year was Kiriban. He averages 13.5 points a game, five rebounds a game. And the big man in the middle, we've spoken a lot about this guy, Donovan Klingen, seven foot two, 280 pounds, a sophomore from Bristol, Connecticut. Saturday night against Alabama, 18 points, five rebounds, four block shots for Klingen. He was the most outstanding player of the East Regional. He is uh, a Big East honorable mention selection was clinging. Dan Hurley, head coach of the Huskies in his sixth season as the head coach in Connecticut. 14th season overall having coached at Wagner and Rhode Island. Dan Hurley just earlier this week named the Naismith Coach of the Year. Connecticut with five NCAA championships to their credit, looking to go back-to-back -back as a national champ and be the first team to do so since Florida did it in 2006 and 2007. The third-ranked Purdue Boilermakers are the number one seed representing the Midwest. They are 34-4 and four on the season, and here's how they will line up. The same starting lineup this year for all 39 games. The point guard, Braden Smith, 6-foot, 175-pound sophomore from Westfield, Averaging 12.7 points a game, 5.8 rebounds a game, and 7.5 assists per ball game. Braden has eight double doubles on the season. He has 60 steals, shoots 43% from three, was an all Big Ten first team performer, and an Associated Press All American honorable mention. His running mate in the backcourt is Lance Jones, 6'1, 200 pound fifth year. A transfer from Southern Illinois, Lance originally from Evanston, Illinois, averaging 11.9 points a game, 2.7 rebounds, shooting 36% from three. He has 50 steals. He was all Big Ten honorable mention this year. Lance, 34 points shy of being a 2,000-point career scorer. The forwards are Fletcher Lawyer, 6'4", 180-pound sophomore from Fort Wayne's Homestead High School, averaging 10.6 uh, points a game. He's shooting 45% from three and 86% from the foul line. Also at a forward, Trey Kaufman Wren, six foot nine, 230 pound red shirt sophomore from Sellersburg, went to Silver Creek High School. He's averaging 6.4 points, 4.1 rebounds a game. And the big man in the middle is Zach Eady at seven foot four, 300 pounds, the senior from Toronto, leading the nation in scoring at 24.9 points a game. Second in the nation in rebounding at 12.2 rebounds a game. He has 82 blocks on the season. Just earlier this week, he was named the Naismith winner as the top overall player in all of college basketball. He won the Kareem Abdul-Jabbar trophy as well, the Oscar Robertson trophy, Sporting News Player of the Year, NABC Player of the Year, Associated Press, uh, Press Player of the Year, USBWA Player of the Year. The only award he hasn't won is the Wooden Award, and that's because that one doesn't get announced until next weekend. The head coach of the Boilermakers is Matt Painter in his 19th season. Coach Painter with 447 wins at Purdue. He was named the Big Ten Coach of the Year earlier this season, five times he's been named the Big Ten Coach of the Year. Coach Painter, all-time against UConn, 0-1, losing in this very building to UConn in a Sweet 16 game. That was the only time Connecticut has ever beaten the Boilermakers. Purdue is 4-1 all-time against the UConn Huskies. Our officials for this game has assigned by the NCAA Jeffrey Anderson, who's working his third straight national championship game, Terry Oglesby, who is also working his third straight national championship game, and Roger Errors, who appears in a national championship game as an official for the first time in his career. Home whites for UConn. They're technically the highest seeded team in this tournament. So they wear home whites. It's white jerseys with white shorts. Blue numerals and lettering front and back with red trim. 
The Boilermakers, for the first time in the NCAA tournament, will wear black. Last time Purdue wore black was a road game in early March at Illinois. Boilermakers in all black unis. That's black jerseys with black shorts. It reads Purdue in gold across the chest. That's old gold, capital bold lettering with the gold numerals front and back. And we are almost set for the 2024 Men's National Championship game. So much excitement and build up that comes to this moment. Both these teams, two of the premier teams in the country, two of the premier bigs in the country that are both going to get drafted in the first round of the NBA draft, you would think, coming up here in June. So, man, get your popcorn ready, right? This is going to be fantastic hoops. Well, often during the regular season, we complain on the radio network about these 9 o'clock tips making for late nights for all of us. We won't complain about this one because this is the national championship title tilt. It's going to be interesting to see what UConn does from a matchup standpoint. We, of course, with some inside info, <laughs> following the Purdue team around, we know how Purdue will match up. It'll be interesting to see how the Huskies match up on the Purdue Boilermakers. A lot of good perimeter defenders on this UConn Huskies team. Alex Caravan, the starting power forward, you would assume, will be guarding Trey Kaufman Wren, and that could be a matchup the Boilermakers could exploit on the block. Players are ready, officials are ready, fans are ready. We're just waiting on the television commercial team to come out of commercial so we can get this baby started. Look at this crowd. Man. It's electric, and it feels like probably 75, 80% Purdue fans from everything we're kind of hearing and from all the, the cheers and the boos. So, but as Coach Painter always says, right, players got to give the crowd something to cheer about. We'll see if Purdue can do just that. Purdue fans are thirsty in the desert for a national title. Jeffrey Anderson, the official, will step in between Klingon and Edie. Klingon at seven foot two. Edie at seven foot four. Fans on their feet. 70,000 plus in this building as the ball is tossed high in the sky, tipped into the favor of Purdue. And we are underway in the national title game in Glendale, Arizona. Purdue traveling right to left. Braden Smith drives to the left block and stops there. Finds Lawyer behind him on a trail, left wing. Now back to Braden Smith near the left corner. Dribbling, guarded closely here by Castle. Purdue at the top of the key, Lance Jones on a catch. We're down to 10 on the shot clock. Lance Jones, high left wing. Throws it into Edie on the left block with six. He will spin on Klingon, shoot with his right hand and miss. It was short, but it's rebounded by, it looks like, Zach Eady. He dove on the floor to try to save a possession. He was tied up, however, just as he got to the floor by a couple of different UConn Huskies. Klingon was one of them, Castle the other, and because we have a held ball, 33 seconds into the game, the possession arrow favors the UConn Huskies. Well, Purdue had a couple decent looks, I felt, early in that possession. They passed up and you end up getting a tough hook shot late in that possession. Good defense there from Klingon. UConn attacks the bucket to our right to start this game. Here's a three on the right wing. It is missed. No good by Alex Caravan. Rebounded by Purdue's Braden Smith. And here come the Boilermakers right to left. No score in this one. Braden Smith bounces it down inside to Trey Kaufman Wren. He turns and shoots with a right hand and scores. The opening score of the game. A right-handed hook shot from Trey Kaufman Wren. Love that matchup there. Braden Smith throws the bounce pass into Kaufman Wren to a deep post position on Caravan. Caravan, not a guy that likes to get physical on the block. Let's see if TKR can go to work. We played a minute 15 in the Valley of the Sun. Spencer a three, deep right wing. Good. Cam Spencer, the transfer from Rutgers, knocks in a triple, and it's 3-2, to two, Connecticut leading Purdue. Cam Spencer, just an elite shooter, 44% from three, and really an elite cutter. That time, Lance Jones tries to sneak through, shoot the gap at the last second. Spencer fades back and gets the room he needs to get it off. 
High left wing catch with his toes on the arc for Lance Jones. He dribbles near the top of the key with his right hand. Uses the screen from Edie. Now keeps coming down the right side of the paint. Count the basket. And a foul. Lance Jones with an and one opportunity. Purdue's degree plus gives students the chance to earn a Bachelor of Science and one from the College of Liberal Arts both in four years. Check out the Liberal Arts degree plus and see if and one is right for you. That foul is on Tristan Newton, the first team All-American, his first foul. Great job there. Lance got the step, was looking for the shot blocker, saw he wasn't there, got his body into Newton as he makes this, the and one free throw and just nice job getting that contact and then a tough right-handed little floater finish scooping layup style there by LJ. Purdue did not have a single and one opportunity Saturday night against North Carolina State. They have an early one in this game. Boilermakers have a lead of 5-3 to three over UConn two minutes into this game. Tristan Newton on the right block will challenge Fletcher Lawyer. He'll lean into Lawyer and he'll draw the foul. Official Jeffrey Anderson from the baseline hits Fletcher Lawyer with a personal and that will send Tristan Newton to the foul line where he is an 80% foul shooter. 17.53 to go in this first half and Purdue leads 5-3. to three. Well, Fletcher Lawyer and the Purdue coaching staff very displeased with that call. Fletcher Lawyer did a good job staying on his feet when Newton got into his pump fix there at the block. And then Newton kind of jumps into Fletcher with his arms straight up. And the official gives the call there against Fletch. They're not happy as Newton does sink the first free throw. Tristan Newton, 27 points, 12 rebounds in their game at Creighton. That's the last time they lost. That was back on February the 20th. Second free throw on the way is made by Tristan Newton. And that ties the game at 5-5. Five to 17.50 five. to go in this half. Here's some full court pressure. Castle guarding Braden Smith as he brings it over the timeline right to left on a left-handed dribble. Castle, an outstanding on-ball defender, the freshman from Covington, Georgia. Purdue throws it inside to Trey Coughlin. Wren. He spins away from some trouble and then still had his shot blocked by the long arm of Donovan Klingen. Really good ball defense there from Klingen coming from the weak side to block that shot. The ball now in the hands of the Huskies. Cam Spencer will drive. He'll jump stop. Shoot a layup and score. Oh, the crafty Cam Spencer finds his way to the rim. Lays it in. Five points for Cam Spencer. And it's a 7-5 to five UConn lead. Well, you said it. That's what makes him so tough is his craftiness and his footwork right there. Comes to a jump stop and then steps through. 17-05 to go in a game. Purdue throws it inside to Edie. He works on Klingen. Shoots a right-handed hook shot while falling away and scores. First bucket of the game for Zach Edie. We're tied at 7 UConn the ball, attacking that basket to our right in their white uniforms. Rising and firing for 15 and missing. Tristan Newton rebounded. Trey Kaufman ran and he threw it out of bounds. He threw it behind Braden Smith on the outlet pass. And that is a turnover for the Boilermakers. Their first, actually their second, when you count the earlier held ball situation. This is a dead ball turnover, but it gives the ball right back to UConn after Purdue had secured the rebound. That's a tough one there. Braden Smith kind of floating down the sideline looking for the outlet. Kaufman Wren throws it, does throw it slightly behind him. Just a play that's tough there. You'd like to see Purdue obviously be able to connect. We're tied at seven. Cam Spencer with five on a shot clock. Snake dribbles to the free throw line. Shot fakes, keeps the dribble going. Leans in, leaves it down low for Klingen at the last second, and Klingen dunks it home. A great feed by Cam Spencer in the interior. Allows Klingen to get a dunk shot, and it's UConn nine, Purdue seven. Had a favorable matchup there on Fletcher Lawyer and got him off balance. Purdue inside to Edie on Klingen on the block. No double team. They'll play him one-on-one. -on -one. Edie will score with a left-handed banker. Four in the game for Zach Edie. We're tied at nine. Oh, you got to love Big Z going right at Klingen. Right hook last time. This time drop step. Left hook off the glass. Less than 16 to go in this opening half. All square at nine apiece. The two number one seeds playing one another here. Klingen will try to back down Edie from the right block. Give it up outside to Spencer. Lance Jones on him. Shot clock at seven. Cam Spencer at the baseline will stop 18 feet away. Now he will pull the trigger and make it. Cam Spencer is off to a great start for the Huskies. Seven early points, and it's a two-point lead for UConn. Yeah, Cam Spencer is a flat-out player. Just so crafty, shot making from all angles right there. A tough fade away on the baseline over the top of Zach Eady. 15 20 remains of the game. In the Eady it goes. He shoots on Kling and this one partially deflected. Eady thought he was fouled on the run. Here comes Yukon. Layup. No, they missed it. Caravan rebounds, however. A reload here for the Huskies. 
left baseline into the hands of Castle, and he's called for traveling. He got a little too anxious to drive in from the left baseline, and he pulled the pivot. 15.04 to go in the opening half. UConn 11, Purdue 9 on the Central Indiana Honda dealer scoreboard. This is Boilermaker Basketball on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. Spring is here, and this is your time to venture out and reemerge in a new versatile Ford SUV. Go anywhere and do anything in a Ford Escape, Explorer, Edge, or Bronco Sport. All with the capability, power, and tech that will help you forge new paths. Don't hold back. It's your time to hit the road. Get out there and experience it in a new Ford SUV. Go to buyfordnow.com and then head on over to your local Ford store today. Hey, Purdue fans, say hello to the most powerful gallon in agriculture from BW Fusion and say goodbye to traditional crop nutrition. We've simplified product selection to create a personalized gallon that's crafted for your specific crop, problem areas, budget, and more. It enhances your farm's profitability, 30-plus years of crop nutrition data, and industry leadership. Build your most powerful gallon in ag with BW Fusion today at mpga.ag. Let's get back to the action. Boiler up. At Farm Credit Mid-America and Rural First, we do more than lend. We lift up our rural communities that we serve, too. From our day-to-day -day business of providing reliable credit to farmers and rural residents, to our community investment efforts and scholarships for college students, we help Indiana's rural communities find their next level. Visit FCMA.com to learn more about how we work with partners like Purdue University. Boiler up. Farm Credit Mid-America and Rural First are equal opportunity lenders. I get paid to do this. How cool is this? Wow. <laughs> like you get paid to be a coach. And for me, I don't think there's a place out there better for me than Purdue University. Hi, I'm Kate Young, host of This is Purdue, the official podcast of Purdue University. Over the last three years, my conversations with Boilermakers have been serious, informative, and in the case of that exchange with former Purdue basketball coach Gene Cady and current head coach Matt Painter, downright fun. Be sure to follow This is Purdue on your favorite podcast app or on YouTube. This is Braden Smith, and you're listening to Purdue Basketball. This broadcast of the NCAA Division I Men's Basketball Championship is authorized under broadcast rights granted by the NCAA through Westwood One. It is intended solely for the private non-commercial use of our audience, any reproduction, retransmission, or other use of this broadcast, without the express written consent. It's 11-9, UConn leading Purdue at the first media timeout, 15-04 here in the first half. Story of the first stole, not quite five minutes for UConn. The Rutgers transfer, Cam Spencer. No doubt, he, he's an elite player, uh, going to be tough to handle. Purdue's going to have to really be hooked up. Uh, it would be interesting to see Cam and Heidi subbing in this game now, whether he maybe gets that assignment or not. But, you know, one stat that just jumped, jumped out to me that I think is just interesting and maybe – you know, some fans might be interested to get more clarification on uh, the points from turnover stat. So Connecticut leads that category right now, two to nothing. Well, well, there are two points that they're getting credit for on this because Purdue only has one turnover. Is Purdue throws it out of bounds, but they score the following possession after the turnover, so they get points from turnovers there for those two points. It's not doesn't have to directly be you know a live ball turnover to get points for that category. Mason Gillis subbing in for Purdue, the 6'6 redshirt senior from Newcastle. Purdue on the run all the way to the rim, the lob, and a dunk. A perfect pass from Braden Smith. Zach Eady punches it home, and we're tied at 11. That was filthy, Rob. Unbelievable. Braden Smith put it on a tee, and Big Z just dropped it on top of Klingon's head. Camden Heidi into the game. Bob mentioned him, the 6'6 redshirt freshman from Wyzetta, Minnesota. He has the task of guarding Tristan Newton, the first-team All-American. Newton, uh, Newton to the right elbow, keeps going underneath the bucket, kicks it out to the high left wing, gets it back from a teammate, will shoot a baseline jumper and score. Castle found him as he relocated to the baseline, and he knocks it in. Four points in the game for Tristan Newton. UConn leading. Oh, they're going to give him a three, aren't they? That is a three, so it's 14 to 11 UConn. That was a high-level shot there for Newton. He gives it up on the baseline, jumping in the air, and then relocates to the corner. A lot of defenders will relax on a relocation. That's what happened there. Well, the makers had it down low, but couldn't get the shot to go, and then a foul in the backcourt. Lance Jones was trying to provide uh, some resistance after a missed Purdue shot was rebounded by Stefan Castle, and Lance reached and fouled Castle in the process. Two fouls on the Boilermakers, 14-11 UConn, 
13.57 to go in his first half. UConn will sub. They'll bring in Hassan Diara, 6'2", 190-pound senior from Queens, New York. He's a transfer from Texas A&M. Well, you hate the foul there, certainly, because it's kind of unwarranted, but it does stop a potential fast break, I suppose. So now Purdue can set its defense. Diara averages six points a game off the bench. Cam Spencer, leaner, blocked. Blocked out of there by Nahidi, uh, Zach Heady, but picked up by UConn's Diara. Now on a drive to the rim goes Newton. Blocked again by Zach Eady. Eady with back-to-back -back blocks. That has the Purdue fans on their feet. And the ball belongs. Baseline right to UConn. And he gives an emphatic yell after that second block. But, man, Purdue, three Purdue guys kind of bounced into each other after the first block, and neither of them corralled it. UConn inbounding baseline right, only five on a shot clock. Cam Spencer stepped back three with two on the shot clock, misses, and Edie rebounds, lost it, got it back. Well, Edie deserved that defensive rebound yes, after did. the show he put on defensively blocking shots. Blue with the ball, trailing 14-11 at the 13-15 mark of half number one. Braden Smith near the center circle using a screen from Edie. On his right hand he goes, lobs into Edie with clinging on him. Working on him on the block is Edie spinning and shooting and getting a friendly roll in the desert. Zach Edie is punching the chest and he is fired up. Eight points for Edie. Purdue trails by one. And Zach Edie looks like a man possessed here right now. Getting to that jump hook center of the lane. He wants a touch every time. He looks like an angry young man right here. And that's good for Purdue as Diara drives down the right side of the paint. Purdue never stopped the progress of the ball handler, Hassan Diara. And now it's 16-13, to 13, UConn. Yeah, that's a situation. You just got to get that thing squared up by Lance Jones. You can't allow the direct line drive. Watermakers between the circles. Mason Gillis dribbling with a left hand. Dribbled twice now. Hands to Lance Jones. He's on the left wing and bounces it into Edie. Edie on Klingen. Steps through. Left-handed layup. Count the basket. And a foul. An and one opportunity. Purdue's degree plus gives students a chance to earn a Bachelor of Science and one for the College of Liberal Arts both in four years. Check out the Liberal Arts degree plus. See if and one is right for you. That is so freaking high level right there by Zach Eady. The up and under move, step through with the left hand. I mean, he's getting into everything right now. Jump hooks right right side, going left. Just unbelievable, and you love the intensity Zach Eady has brought. Eady already 10 points, giving him 90 straight double-figure games. 90 straight. The free throw is on the way. It's good, and we're tied at 16. Subbing in for the Boilermakers, the freshman, Miles Colvin, replacing Lance Jones. Miles from Indianapolis, 6'5", 200 pounds, and the Purdue crowd has come alive. We're tied at 16. New man into the game. This is Samson Johnson right now playing for UConn. He nearly turned it over, but it ends up being a layup for Diara. Johnson bobbled the ball. Purdue went after it with blood in the water, but didn't get to it, and that allowed DR to be wide open under the basket for a lay-in. Oh, it's great defense by Braden Smith. He turned his back, so Braden poked it away, but it poked right to Caravan, and then Purdue's defense got dislodged. Left corner to Gillis. Inside Edie. Swing it left wing. Colvin bobbled it, throws it back into Edie. Back to Colvin. He'll pull on a triple. It's long, no good. Tip out, rebound. The Boilermakers, Mason Gillis ended up with it. He gives it to Edie, and what do we have? He's... Did he step on the baseline or he was foul, fouled? Foul. I was blocked out. He was fouled. Mason Gillis gets an offensive rebound, and he was fouled in the process. Timeout on the floor. It's 18-16. UConn leads Purdue. 11-28 to go in the first half on the Central Indiana Honda Dealer scoreboard. This is Boilermaker Basketball on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. Higher yield potential starts with the season-long systemic disease protection of Zyway brand fungicides from FMC. Zyway brand fungicides protect corn crops from key foliar diseases and support physiological benefits that help develop healthier, higher yielding corn for a difference you'll appreciate at harvest. Visit your FMC retailer for an at-plant advantage. Always read and follow all label directions. 
your company is seeking to relocate or expand quickly, Hancock County, Indiana has a wide variety of business sites, including four shovel-ready certified silver business parks, plus higher-than-normal broadband capacity with an extensive fiber network with more than 2,000 miles of lines. Connecting opportunity with success. Contact the Hancock County Economic Development Council at www.hancockedc.com or at 317-477-7241. That to-do list you have needs one more thing. Chill. It's an easy thing to do. Just crack open an ice-cold Coors Light and chill. Take the afternoon off and binge watch anything. Go to happy hour and stay for a couple hours. Who's counting anyways? Or hang out with just your dog because you've had enough human interaction this week. Whatever you do, do it with a Coors Light. Mountain cold refreshment made to chill. 2024 Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Celebrate responsibly. Unity Healthcare, a trusted pillar in the community for more than 25 years, offers healthcare services that you can depend on. With a team of over 80 highly skilled providers, Unity Healthcare is committed to making the best decisions for your health right here in your local community. Visit one of our many healthcare specialists or urgent care to meet your specific healthcare needs. www.unityhc.com because we believe in working together towards a healthier future. Unity Healthcare, healthier together. Purdue men's basketball postseason sponsored by BW Fusion. Say hello to the most powerful gallon in agriculture from BW Fusion and goodbye to traditional crop nutrition. Find out how to build your most powerful gallon in ag today at mpga.ag. BW Fusion, proud presenting sponsor of Purdue men's basketball postseason. Rob Blackman and Bobby Riddell courtside at the State Farm Stadium. Our broadcast engineer is Wes Scott. Connecticut leads Purdue 18 to 16. Zach Eady has 11 of Purdue's 16 points. Cam Spencer has seven of the 18 for UConn. Well, sure enough, UConn's strategy of trying to play the three-point line, defend it, and eliminate the opposition from getting clean looks, that, that has worked well so far. Purdue was 0 for 1 from three, so just the one attempt that Miles Coleman just took and missed. But the byproduct of that, of course, is you're staying one-on-one -on, -one on the post, and Zach Eady has been feasting. That last foul a moment ago was on Samson Johnson, his first. Purdue inbounds baseline left. Watermakers in their black unis here with 11.22 to go in a half. High left wing, a catch for Lawyer. Top of the key, it goes to Braden Smith. He swings it right side, Mason Gillis, and as he tried to throw it inside to Edie, he was being held by Samson Johnson, which did not allow Edie to get a, a clean catch. And just like that, that's back-to-back. -back. Two fouls on Samson Johnson. He'll have to re uh, he'll have to leave the game, I should say, and Donovan Klingen, who has one foul, will re-enter. Certainly a big call there. Their depth at center getting tested. What a makers with it here. Braden Smith, the floater, banked it home. Braden Smith, his first scoring in the ball game, and we're tied at 18. That's a big bucket there for Braden Smith for a lot of reasons, but his confidence as a scorer, they're going to need him to score, especially now with Klingon going to be staying so attached to Edie. Miles Colvin now guarding Tristan Newton. He gets a crack at trying to slow down the first team All American, one of the best in the business. Newton to the right elbow, stops, rises, fires, and misses long, and Colvin rebounds. Miles Colvin was aggressive to the basketball. Purdue the possession. Right to left. Braden Smith on the run. Right-handed dribble. He'll stop and shoot. Oh, that ball was long. Rebounded Cam Spencer on the weak side. Here come the Huskies. Spencer between the circle stops. Chest pass left side to Yara. He uses a screen now. Working his way to the top of the key. On a give and go. Diara attacks Zach Eady and it's blocked. Third block of the game for Edie. Quickly ahead to Lawyer. He'll attack the rim. His shot was blocked by Caravan. UConn the basketball. Back and forth we go. Excellent defense being played on both ends. Diara a three. Good. Hassan Diara, who averages six points a game on the season, already has seven off of the bench. Well, that's his deal. He's a 35% three-point shooter, but when you watch UConn, a ton of them come in that corner, and he connects there on a big open shot after a huge miss there by Fletcher Lawyer at the rim getting blocked. Edie down low. He went strong. He didn't make the shot, but he was fouled. Braden Smith got into the teeth of the defense. The help side defender came over. That allowed an open Zach Edie at the rim. Fouled before he could really get a clean shot up by Hassan Diera, his first, but it will be two foul shots here for Purdue's Zach Edie. Danny Hurley irate over there, but 
in reality, the foul helps them because Zach Eady tipped that ball in right after he missed. Eady wearing number 15 on the black uniform. Just yesterday, named the Naismith Player of the Year. He misses the first foul shot off of the back of the rim. As Trey Kaufman-Wren comes back in for Mason Gillis, re-entering the game, Lance Jones for Miles Colvin. They get a nice round of applause as they go to the bench. Braden Smith and Lance Jones playing with Trey Kaufman-Wren, Fletcher Lawyer, Zach Eady here. Edie already 11 points, three blocks, second free throw good. Now he has 12 points. And Purdue is trailing 21 to 19. 9.45 to go, the clock ticking. We're in the first half. UConn Huskies 36 and three on the year. Defending national champions. Clinging top of the key, needs some help. Throws a chest pass right side to Jalen Stewart who just checked in a moment ago. Stewart dribbling in from the right side of the paint. A no-look pass, found Klingen, who missed the bunny, and then Edie got the rebound. Klingen was open left side of the bucket, but he banged off a bad-looking bank shot. Purdue with the ball here. Braden Smith, he goes strong. He banks it home through some contact. Probably could have been a foul. No foul was called. They're letting it play. We're tied at 21. That's an unbelievable no call. I can't believe the way Diara smacked down on Braden Smith's right arm, but Braden flexing the muscles, finishing through the contact regardless. Purdue fans on their feet. A blackout in the Valley of the Sun. Diara, top of the key, catch for Klingen, dribbles once, pivots, gives the ball to Castle. Stefan Castle shoots from 18 and misses. Rebounded Zach Eady of the Boilermakers. Who can take the lead on this trip because we're tied at 21. Braden Smith, right elbow, finds Trey Kaufman. Ren. He shot fakes and gets hammered. He got hammered as he shot faked. Jumping high in the air was Diara. And then Diara's knee actually caught Trey in the side of the face. Two fouls on Hassan Diara, and the fouls are now mounting for UConn. As, as a team, they've now committed 16 fouls with 8.34 remaining in the half. Phenomenal shot pick there by Coffin Rembrandt, an even better pass by Braden Smith. And now we have an illegal screen away from the ball against Purdue. Yes, on Lance Jones, his second. Two fouls on Lance Jones. That gets Cam, uh, Camden Heidi up off of the bench. Lance will go to the bench. I did not see that play, fans. I apologize. It was away from the ball, but an illegal screen was the call by the official. And it is a Purdue turnover. The ball back into the hands here of UConn. That's a tough call. Didn't see it either, but considering the, the foul on Braden that wasn't called a second ago, that one hurts. 21-21 our score. UConn the ball. Castle dribbling, throwing right wing to Spencer. He probes the defense, now throws it left wing, and it's stolen. Stolen by a quick-handed Braden Smith. Purdue on the run here. Florida Makers tied at 21 with the Huskies, the number one team in the country. Edie will shoot, and that tie is no longer. Advantage Purdue, a right-handed hook shot for Zebo Zach Edie. Oh, Big Z, a little look right at the UConn bench going back the other way. He is feeling it. Big-time hook shot over the top of Klingon. Purdue with a two-point lead over the UConn Huskies. Klingon chest pass left side. Catch here for Cam Spencer. Throws it. Inside of the arc, left wing to Castle. Stephon Castle, left baseline, fake the shot, gives it back to Spencer. Spencer with four on the shot clock, back to Castle. This time he'll pull the trigger. He'll miss from that left baseline. Good block out for Trey Kaufman. Wren allowed Braden Smith to get the rebound. Here come the Boilers on the run. Braden shooting from 15, missed it, no good. Long rebound ends up in the hands of Tristan Newton. He wants to push pace. UConn loves to play quickly. They average shooting the ball seven seconds into the shot clock per average. Newton will drive at Edie and score. Tristan Newton went right at Zach Edie, banked it in from the right block. Seven in the game for Newton. We're tied at 23. Seven-minute mark of the first half. Really good drive there and using the patience by Newton to get Zach just a tad off balance to finish. Raiden Smith using a screen. Edie top of the key. Stopping, banking it in, or bouncing it into Edie, and he traveled. Zach tried to shot fake his way to the rim, but in doing so, he was called for traveling. Good call by the officials. Timeout on the floor. Purdue 23, UConn 23, 6.50 to go in the first half on the Central Indiana Honda Dealer scoreboard. This is Boilermaker Basketball on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. Higher yield potential starts with the season-long systemic disease protection of Zyway brand fungicides from FMC. 
Zyway brand fungicides protect corn crops from key foliar diseases and support physiological benefits that help develop healthier, higher yielding corn for a difference you'll appreciate at harvest. Visit your FMC retailer for an at plant advantage. Always read and follow all label directions. You know you've got a comeback in you. When you take the next step, you're going to make it count for your career, for your family, for your life. You can earn a degree you're proud of with Purdue Global. Purdue Global is backed by Purdue University, one of the nation's most respected and innovative public universities. This is your chance. This is your opportunity. This is your comeback. Purdue Global, Purdue's online university for working adults. Start your comeback today at purdueglobal.edu. At Indiana Farm Bureau Insurance, we're good at insurance. But not just any insurance. We're good at... No, 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 no! Did you forget the parking brake? Yes, you forgot the parking brake. Insurance. When the forecast calls for cheese ball size hail insurance! Even shouldn't have parked under that tree. Insurance. Start with Indiana Farm Bureau Insurance and stop knocking on wood. Franciscan Health is proud to be the official medical provider for Purdue Athletics. Does a sudden sports injury have you on the bench? We can assist. Franciscan Health sports medicine specialists have mastered a team approach to sports injuries. You'll have access to a network of orthopedic professionals, rehabilitation services, and highly advanced technologies and treatments to get you back out on the field. To learn more, visit franciscanhealth.org slash sportsmedicine. This is Ethan Morton, and you're listening to Purdue Basketball. We are tied at tied at 23 apiece with 6.50 to go in the first half. Purdue Athletics would like to thank and recognize members of Black and Gold Club who support Purdue Athletics through their sponsorship at the highest level. Black and Gold Club members include Indiana Packers, Rorman Automotive Group, Wabash, Purdue Global, Purdue Federal Credit Union, and Molson Coors, each great partners of Purdue Athletics. Tied at 23, the Boilermakers out are being out-rebounded 10-9. Purdue with three turnovers, UConn with two. Purdue has only attempted one three-point shot, 0 for 1, and it makes sense because Zach Eady doing the yeoman's work down low in the painted area, already 14 points in the game for Zach Eady. Pretty impressive when you think about Purdue, such a great three-point shooting team. They don't necessarily make a ton of threes per game, but they shoot such a high percentage right now. Purdue not being able to capitalize at the three-point line. Nice to see they're still tied in this game, even with UConn outscoring them by nine points from three. Purdue's latest turnover, a traveling violation on Zach Eady. So UConn, the ball as we're back to action, wearing their white unis here in the desert. Klingon is fouled on an entry pass by a Boilermaker, and he'll have a chance at an and one. The foul is on. Caleb first. Caleb had just subbed into the game during this last media timeout to give Zach Eady his first rest of the entire Final Four. Zach played all 40 minutes on Saturday night, but the foul against Caleb first will put Klingon at the line. Four points for Donovan Klingon, who is a 58% foul shooter. He has a, right, a, a white shooting sleeve on the right arm, and he shoots and makes it. So an and one converted for Klingon. And it's 26-23 UConn. Braden Smith bringing it up the floor, being uh, floor being hounded there by Stefan Castle. Not a lawyer. He'll drive and shoot a floater. It's no good. Tip and we have a foul. The tip was from Trey Kaufman Wren, but who was the foul against? I think Kaufman Wren maybe in the back. Well, regardless, that'll get Zach Eady up off the bench. That was a short rest for Big Z. All of uh, 27 seconds of rest for Zach Eady. On yeah, the previous play, Caleb First got caught topside with the ball in the corner, and Klingon with his huge size pushed him up off the block, and it gave him the angle. On a drive, Stephon Castle into the big fella. Shot blocked by Trey Kaufman. Wren saved inbounds by Braden Smith. Klingon attacked the rim, and this time Trey Kaufman Wren got the block shot, not Zach Eady. Purdue with a possession here. Top of the key, Lawyer wants to drive on his defender. Shoots a floater. It is no good. Tipped in the basket by Zach Eady. 
UConn bench thought that should have been offensive basket interference. The official Roger Ayers looked right at Dan Hurley and said, nope, that's a bucket. Blues down 26-25. I felt like that's a good call. I thought that ball was well off the front of the rim. Klingon on the left elbow, dribbling once. Now twice, now hands to Caravan. He dribbles left perimeter, hands to Cam Spencer. Cam in the paint, lost the ball on the drive. We have a foul or travel. It's going to be a foul on the Boilermakers. Coach Painter feels like he traveled there as he was meandering through the lane. Camden Heidi, the guilty party, his first foul. Purdue has committed 16 fouls. UConn has committed 16 fouls. 5.29 to go here in half number one. UConn 26, Purdue 25. Yeah, the good thing about the Huskies now, they just keep coming at you. You can see why they're number one in the country. Klingon a short jumper in front of the rim. Good, he got a lucky roll, but it all counts the same. Klingon with seven points. UConn leads 28-25. Those are the ones that Coach Craner always talks about. He'll joke that the guy missed it so bad it went in, and that was a perfect example of that from Klingon. Missed it badly off the back of the rim, and it found its way into the basket. Edie on Klingon now. Shooting with the right hand. Hook shot, he missed. Trying to save it, Trey Kaufman ran. He falls into the cameraman baseline left as he was giving supreme effort, but he wasn't able to save the ball cleanly. It goes out of bounds, and UConn will have the possession. Excellent effort by Trey Kaufman Wren. Just could not save that thing in bounds. UConn 28, Purdue 25. We have 4.52 to go, first half. Camden Heidi guarding Cam Spencer for the moment. One Cam guards another. Stephon Castle to the back, cutting Newton and Tristan Newton a layup. The old dribble at, and Newton left his defender, Braden Smith, in the dust for a reverse left-handed layup. A very well-designed play there. Braden Smith tried to lunge back into the passing lane at the last second with his left hand, just couldn't quite get it, and then Zach Eady pulled up too far away to contest. 30-25, to five-point lead for UConn. Trey Kaufman-Wren spinning on Caravan, left it short. Klingon, however, couldn't grab it cleanly for UConn. He lost it out of bounds, baseline left. Purdue will sub at this dead ball opportunity. Lance Jones with two fouls coming into the game. Mason Gillis will sub in here. 4.19 to go in the half, nine on the shot clock. Purdue trailing 30 to 25. Purdue ball baseline left. Certainly feels like a, a big possession here for Purdue to try to get a bucket. Purdue lobs for Edie on the inbound. He does catch, he does shoot, he misses this one short. And it's rebounded out of there by UConn, Stefan Castle. Castle with a white t-shirt under that white uniform. Leaves a caravan three, no, rebounded Edie. Zach Edie goes strong for the rebound for the Boilermakers. Five rebounds to go with 16 points for Zach Edie. Purdue has the ball again, now at the 3.55 mark of the first half. Top of the key, Lawyer, he wants to drive on Spencer. Gets to the rim, is stripped at the last second, and they say the ball goes off of the leg of Fletcher Lawyer. So the ball's going to go right back to UConn. Good hands by Cam Spencer. On the Central Indiana Honda Dealer scoreboard, UConn over Purdue 30-25. to This is Boilermaker Basketball on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. Hey, Purdue fans. Say hello to the most powerful gallon in agriculture from BW Fusion and say goodbye to traditional crop nutrition. We've simplified product selection to create a personalized gallon that's crafted for your specific crop, problem areas, budget, and more. It enhances your farm's profitability, 30-plus years of crop nutrition data, and industry leadership. Build your most powerful gallon in ag with BW Fusion today at mpga.ag. Let's get back to the action. Boiler up. U.S. Foods and the Purdue Boilermakers. What a recipe for success. Like Purdue, we both stand for quality and value. From our state-of-the-art Indianapolis-based distribution center, we at U.S. Foods are committed to meeting our customers' needs by providing all your quality food service and equipment products throughout all of Indiana and Northern Kentucky. It's what we do to bring guests into your business every day that makes the difference. Enjoy the game and remember, U.S. Foods, the official food service supplier of Purdue Athletics. 
If you're a Boilermakers fan, you know that scoring big is everything. Few things feel as good as watching your team pass, shoot, and dribble their way to victory. Off the court, you can experience that same feeling with a Magnum tractor from Case IH. Magnum tractors match the power, speed, and strength of the best Boilermakers by helping you net every challenge that comes your way. Score big with a Magnum tractor this season by visiting your local Case IH dealer or go to caseih.com slash Boilermakers to learn more. Boiler up! At Farm Credit Mid-America and Rural First, we do more than lend. We lift up our rural communities that we serve, too. From our day-to-day -day business of providing reliable credit to farmers and rural residents, to our community investment efforts and scholarships for college students, we help Indiana's rural communities find their next level. Visit fcma.com to learn more about how we work with partners like Purdue University. Boiler up. Farm Credit Mid-America and Rural First are equal opportunity lenders. You're good at being you, and Indiana Farm Bureau Insurance is good at your insurance. Find an agent to help you or get a quote today at infb.com. Start with Indiana Farm Bureau Insurance and stop knocking on wood. Purdue is trailing 30-25 to with 3.49 to go in the first half. One thing you'll need to be leery of going to the end of the half here, the final 3.49, Boilermaker fans, is UConn going on a big run. It's what they did to end the half against Illinois early in this tournament, and it's one thing that they specialize in, kill shots. They certainly do, and there was some symmetry there as the score was tied 23-23, just like it was between Illinois late in that first half. Purdue is the least likely team, though, in the country to surrender a kill shot per Evan Mayakawa, his... Great analytical work he does. Purdue hasn't given up a 10-0 run or a kill shot since February 15th. But UConn has had 12 kill shots since February 15th. As they say, Rob, something's got to give potentially in this matchup. But, uh, yeah, Purdue, this is huge last 340. This is where UConn put the pedal to the middle against Illinois. Purdue's got to respond. And then, of course, they opened the second half on a 25-0 run against the Illini to put that one to bed early. UConn the ball as we're back to action here. Top of the key, holding it, clinging. Pass faking once, now twice. Finally does give it up to Castle. He'll drive in from the right wing and shoot a floater and got a friendly roll. First scoring of the game for Stefan Castle, the Big East freshman of the year. And the lead at 7, 32-25 for UConn. Watermakers in their black uniforms, looking for some offense here. Braden Smith to the left elbow will rise and fire, and that'll help. Braden Smith with a jumper. Six points for Braden. Purdue's down 32-27. That's a huge hit for Braden there, and he was much more under control and not floating and fading as much as he does sometimes on his pull-up Jays. Tristan Newton, perimeter right, left-handed dribble, just outside of the arc by a step. Chest pass, top of the key, caught by Castle. Castle to the left wing, draws a foul. Lance Jones took a charge. I heard the whistle. I had to wait on the call. Terry Ogle Oglesby says it's a charging foul. Lance Jones takes the charge. And a huge call there going in favor of Purdue because obviously Lance Jones playing with the two fouls currently. Castle does extend the form a little bit, but Lance definitely, oh, he takes a shot to the face as well there. So probably a good call. And uh, Lance Jones stays in the game with the two fouls. First foul of the game on Castle. That is team foul number seven. But the offensive foul means Purdue just takes the ball out of bounds. Braden Smith faking a three, perimeter left, guarded by Caravan. Now Braden works his way between the circles on a right-handed dribble. Shot clock at four. Deep three for Braden Smith. Bullseye! Braden Smith with a much-needed triple. Oh, that's a massive triple time for Braden. Purdue desperately needed to get a three to go down. And now a timeout called by the Connecticut Huskies. And the Purdue fans are on their feet. Five in a row for Braden Smith. Purdue's down 32 to 30 with 2.09 remaining here in this first half as we are at the top of the hour. So let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is Boilermaker Basketball from Learfield. No one gets you closer to the game than Sirius XM Big Ten Radio. Tune in for news, talk, analysis from the offseason through the regular season into the postseason. We've got Purdue covered. 
Anywhere you go, get a free trial at SiriusXM.us slash Big Ten Radio 2023. Well, UConn was up 32 to 25 with just over three and a half remaining in the half, and it felt like the Huskies had maybe seized control of this ball game. And wouldn't you know it, the Boilermakers go on a modest 5-0 run over the course of uh, just over a minute. And just like that, it's 32 to 30. Purdue hanging close. What a response there by Purdue. You said it. It was a seven-point advantage for the Huskies. It was looking a little dangerous that Purdue might not end this half on a strong note. And then Braden Smith single-handedly takes it upon himself to start connecting with the jumper. The first time a pull-up at about the left elbow, nothing but nylon, and then a really difficult fading three on the right wing. Late shot clock. Called for the ball screen from Zach Eath. About seven on the clock. Got free on the right wing with Klingon in that drop coverage. And he got it to splash down. And now Purdue just down two with some momentum as the Huskies call a T.O. Dan Hurley with that use it or lose it timeout that the coaches are afforded in the first half. Hurley, the Big East coach of the year. The Naismith coach of the year. What a job he has done with the Huskies. Not only are they 36-3, and three, but they also had to survive a, a rough patch earlier in the year when Donovan Klingon was out with injury. The Huskies held it together, and uh, quite frankly, they have been about as dominant as one could expect them to be when you're the reigning national champions. Of course, adding Cam Spencer to your roster doesn't hurt. Why we have a moment, a huge shout-out to the paint crew. They have traveled in mass here to Arizona to be a part of this game today. The paint crew, for those that may have seen this on social media, were lined up outside of the State Farm Stadium this morning at 5.30 a.m. local time. 5.30 a.m. The paint crew was here and ready to go. Extremely impressive there from the paint crew, and you love to see it. Something else we should talk about. Just feeling this, we're courtside here. The pace of this game and the intensity is national championship level worthy. Uh, it's been fun to just feel the, the heat and intensity of this battle. Braden Smith, nine points after that last hit from three. Miles Colvin subbing back in for the Boilermakers as we're back to action. Newton a floater, right elbow good. They ran a little a screen action to, for a Newton to catch it coming downhill at the right elbow, and he floats one home. Yeah, just a little bit too easy there. Comes off that thing. Too much space from Braden Smith trailing behind. And then Zach Eady can't come too far detached from Klingon being careful for the lob. Lawyer at the 15-foot mark right elbow. Throws it inside to Eady. He turns and spins. Missed, but Mason Gillis has a weak side rebound. And then Mason was tied up by Cam Spencer. The held ball possession arrow will favor Purdue with six on the shot clock. Baseline left. I, I did not see a jump ball there whatsoever. If anything, it was just a play on because uh, Mason Gillis kind of ripped that thing away and tossed it out to a teammate. But a uh, jump ball, that's certainly something. Purdue has to go quickly with just six on that shot clock. And Lawyer has to take a timeout. Fletcher was the trigger man, could not get the ball in. So Purdue will burn its use it or lose it timeout. 133 on the game clock, six on the shot clock. Immediately... Purdue goes to talk to Sasha Stefanovic, who is really the designer of Purdue's inbounds plays. He has been most of the season. Sasha then offers up some uh, quick thoughts, it looks like, to Matt Painter, and now Coach Painter will gather the team here. 34-30, Connecticut leading Purdue, 133 to go in the first half. They're really letting those big guys play down there on the last shot attempt from Zach. He really caved playing in deep post position, caught that thing pretty much right under the hoop, drop stepped towards the right side of the whim. I felt like he really took quite a bit of contact in the, in the middle of his hook shot there from Klingon. Uh, he misses the, I mean, to me, if Zach Eady's going to miss the rim completely on a shot from two feet away, he's probably got fouled. I mean, <laughs> yeah. let's be fair here. Like, he's the <laughs> national player of the year. Like, Zach Eady ain't just throwing up a scud missile spanker from two feet. So, uh, luckily, Mason Gill's got the rebound. And they called that jump ball, but here, big possession, six seconds left on the clock. Now let's see what Purdue draws up a second opportunity. They'll throw it way out high to the right wing to Gillis. He'll have to shoot a contested three. It was actually blocked. Blocked. Really good defense by Caravan, who stands six foot eight. Mason had to force a three because the shot clock was expiring, and that gives the ball to UConn. 
Garaban, perimeter left. Chest pass further left wing, this time caught by Spencer. He gives it up to Tristan Newton, who had it stolen. Now it's another held ball. Edie fighting with Klingen. And this time, the held ball possession arrow favors UConn. Boy, Purdue, that's the second time in this half. Purdue has knocked the ball away from UConn defensively, but hasn't come away with a ball. And now we have a stoppage of play. I think they're arguing about the possession arrow. Should be, should be Connecticut. Yes, we just it had is. a held ball a moment Coach ago. Coach Painter's surprised at the arrow turn because the phantom jump ball call that literally no one Copy in the that. arena that. thought was a jump ball. So that, that was the quick concern there. The officials just want to make sure they have it right. And it will be UConn ball baseline right. Nine on the shot clock for UConn. 108 on the game clock. Four-point lead for the Huskies. The inbounder, Newton. To Klingen, who will shoot a three, he will miss, but Spencer got the rebound. A reload here for UConn. Offensive rebound leads to another opportunity for the Huskies. Ten on the shot clock now. Snake dribbling, here goes Newton, challenging Colvin, missed the shot, tipped at it, and it went in the bucket. He tipped it back into the basket in traffic, and now it's 36-30. to 30. The tip-in will be credited to Stefan Castle. Yeah, Castle, just great athleticism, got his left hand on it. Braden Smith to the right elbow, lobs for Edie, it was actually stolen. His lob pass was taken away by Stefan Castle. The quick hands of Castle. Giving the ball back to Connecticut. 25 on the game clock, 22 on the shot clock. Huge defensive possession here for Purdue. 36-30, Connecticut leading. Shot clock at 10. Going to work, Tristan Newton dribbling perimeter left. Guarded closely by Braden Smith. In and out dribble, now to Spencer. He'll shot fake. He'll shoot a one-footed floater. It's no good. Rebounded Fletcher Lawyer. His three-quarter court he will be short of the rim. And we have reached halftime here in Arizona. Connecticut 36, Purdue 30. Connecticut had led by seven at 32-25. The Boilermakers go on a 5-0 run to cut it to 32-30. And then Connecticut over the final 2.09 with a modest 4.0 run of their own, pushing the lead back to six, 36 to 30. Halftime here at State Farm Stadium in Glendale, Arizona. 36-30 our score as we pause for just a short moment. Our Coors Light halftime report begins when we return. This is Boilermaker Basketball on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. University Bookstore is the official textbook source for Purdue Athletics and the home of the original Purdue Pete. Cash in on three-point Thursdays with Purdue men's and women's basketball. When Purdue scores, so do you. With winning home games, you can save up to 39% on in-store purchases. Gear up for game days with the number one fun place for Purdue. University Bookstore, two locations, State Street, and across from Mackey Arena. It's University Bookstore. This is Mason Gillis, Purdue men's basketball. For my friends at the Haldeman Companies, proud supporters of Purdue University. They use the same principles for success that Coach Panner teaches us. The importance of teamwork, execution, and tremendous effort are keys to success. Their team includes farm managers, appraisers, and real estate brokers with the experience, knowledge, and professionalism to help you accomplish your farm goals. Since 1930, if it has anything to do with the business of farming, Haldeman can help. Visit Halderman.com to learn more. That to-do list you have needs one more thing. Chill. It's an easy thing to do. Just crack open an ice-cold Coors Light and chill. Take the afternoon off and binge watch anything. Go to happy hour and stay for a couple hours. Who's counting anyways? Or hang out with just your dog because you've had enough human interaction this week. Whatever you do, do it with a Coors Light. Mountain cold refreshment made to chill. 2024 Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Celebrate responsibly. We boiler makers show our pride in a number of ways. From a Purdue flag flying high on game day to a black and gold tie worn to the office. That loyalty is built on precious memories, time-honored traditions, and lifelong friendships. It's everlasting, and it stays with you wherever you go. So whether you're at Mackey Arena, your hometown grocery store, or across the country, the pride is always there. And now with the Purdue Federal Visa Signature Card, you have one more way to show your pride. 
Purdue Federal, the official credit card for Purdue fans everywhere. Federally insured by NCUA. On the Purdue Global Sports Network, from Learfield, Boilermaker Basketball is brought to you by Coors Light, made to chill. Proud sponsor of the Purdue Boilermakers. Also brought to you by Case IH. Take your success off the court and out into the field with Case IH's superior farming tools. Visit your local Case IH dealer or learn more at caseih.com slash boilermakers. And by Indiana Kitchen Premium Pork Products. Get to know us at indianakitchen.com. Purdue Boilermaker Basketball is on the air. This is the Boilermaker. Boiler Maker Halftime Show. Halftime here at the State Farm Stadium, the home during the NFL season of the Arizona Cardinals. This weekend and on this Monday night, it has served as the NCAA National Semifinal Venue and tonight, the National Finals game between Purdue and Connecticut. UConn leading Purdue 36 to 30, and we are at the halftime horn. This is our Coors Light Halftime Report. Coors Light, mounted cold refreshment made to chill. Proud partner of the Purdue Boilermakers. Purdue in this ball game has made only one three-point shot. Purdue is the second best three-point shooting team in the country at 40.6%, but that number's a bit misleading because Purdue's only attempted two threes. Purdue is one of two at the three-point line, while UConn is three of nine three-point shooting. I bring that up, Bob Riddell, because that is UConn's game plan defensively. They've done it all season long. They do not double in the post. They'd rather go one-on-one with a guy like Zach Eady, who right now does have 16 points, than give up an open three because they doubled down. And for the moment, that game plan is working. It certainly is. You know, limiting those three-pointers just analytically, obviously, can pay major dividends. You know, Zach Eady was making them pay a ton early on, but late in the half there, Zach did miss a couple in a row, and when you're able to get those stops and then go back the other way and, and you know, convert, that's going to be the difference in them pushing this thing out to a six-point lead. And I, I also do feel like there's been a couple of, you know, 50-50, you know, loose balls, some crazy bounces that, unfortunately, from a Purdue standpoint, have not gone their way, where Purdue maybe tips a ball and then it goes right to a UConn player, and then Purdue's defense breaks down, and there's a layup. There's just been, you know, some bounces. Uh, that tip in by Castle was really just kind of a fluky. Hey, just trying to get a hand on it, and then it ends up going right in the rim. Uh, been a little unfortunate from a Purdue standpoint with some of the breaks on some of these 50-50 situations. But when you're as uh, hard a playing team as UConn, uh, you do sometimes get those to go in your favor. Well, that is part of it. We can get a real appreciation for it here as we sit courtside. This, uh, hey, look, Purdue. Purdue plays hard. We know. We see it every time the Boilermakers take the floor. UConn plays hard. I mean, this is a couple of teams that are really laying it all out on the line here uh, in this ball game, really getting after one another. It's really made for an enjoyable game for the fans because of how hard the two teams have played. Uh, the turnover number, we were worried about that coming in. And by the way, I'll give you all the halftime statistics here in just a bit, but we were you know, concerned about Purdue and turning that ball over. Purdue did have five first half turnovers but five guys with one turnover apiece so it's not like just one guy struggling for Purdue five guys just one turnover apiece give credit to UConn they only average 9.6 turnovers a game they only have three turnovers in that first half and two of those came from Stephon Castle so rebounds and turnovers we always look at those numbers when we get that stat sheet UConn is out rebounding Purdue 16 to 15 and remember fans Purdue was only out rebounded for an entire game twice all season. Yeah, it's uh, this UConn team, no surprise, fifth-ranked team in the country from a rebound margin standpoint. They definitely have enforced their will on the glass against most opponents throughout the year. Uh, but right now, uh, they're up by one on Purdue, and Purdue, if they want to win this game, they're probably going to need to have their best rebounding half of the season to try to steal these extra possessions because UConn is so good at not turning it over. Uh, Purdue done a good job in their own right with just five total but I think if Purdue's going to win this game, 
it's got to really do some major work on the glass because sometimes the best time to get open three-point attempts are on offensive rebounds because UConn does such a good job taking away the three-point line in normal half-court offense. Purdue's either got to get some threes in transition or threes off offensive rebounds. That would be huge for Purdue to try to come back and win this game in the second half. Well, you mentioned transition. It's something you talked about at length in the pregame show, and that was to keep UConn out of transition where they normally make their hay. They have zero fast break points. Uh, that's been big. That's certainly helping Purdue, you know, hang around in this game. Um, you know, UConn is elite when they get up and down. Uh, Caravan, a guy who can really uh, make it rain from a transition three standpoint. He fortunately, uh, in one of his transition three opportunities, missed it off the back iron. He's 0 for 2 from 3. Hasn't impacted the game too much, although he did have. He has two block shots, one of them a really nice block shot late in the shot clock on Mason Gillis as Purdue tried to run kind of a little funky uh, under out of bounds play where they threw the ball over the top to Mason hoping for him to have some free freedom to get a three off but a good recovery and chase there by Caravan two number one seeds playing one another for the national championship for the first time since 2021 that was the COVID tournament you'll remember where it was played entirely in Indianapolis Baylor and Gonzaga playing one another as two number one seeds. This one here tonight featuring two number one seeds, and from a competitive standpoint, it has not disappointed. UConn 36, Purdue 30. As we take a short break, this is our Coors Light Halftime Report. I was speaking to you about all of those halftime statistics. i give them to you on the other side of this break. It's presented by Brewoff Home Mortgage. This is Boilermaker Basketball on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. Unity Healthcare, a trusted pillar in the community for more than 25 years, offers healthcare services that you can depend on. With a team of over 80 highly skilled providers, Unity Healthcare is committed to making the best decisions for your health right here in your local community. Visit one of our many healthcare specialists or urgent care to meet your specific healthcare needs. www.unityhc.com because we believe in working together towards a healthier future. Unity Healthcare, healthier together. Water damage from a busted pipe can be a real nightmare in these frigid temps. For over 40 years, Hayes & Sons has been restoring water damage in Indiana homes and businesses. They'll help you navigate your insurance claim and get your life back on track. So, when a water disaster strikes, tell your insurance agent you want Hayes & Sons for your restoration work. Visit HayesAndSons.com for more information. mix and match menu has items for every occasion flaked on your friend's open mic night flaky bread twists and molten lava cake should do the trick soccer team duty medium two topping pizzas and stuffed cheesy bread are your best defense is it your dog's half birthday <laughs> celebrate his biggish day with savory sandwiches and tender specialty chicken mix and match two or more items for $6.99 each at Domino's. ask for this offer two item minimum prices participation delivery area and charges may vary bone and wings bread bowl pasta and pan pizza will cost extra local stores have delivery fees and can charge extra for some menu items Keystone Cooperative is centered on delivering the farmer-owned cooperative of the future. Starting today, we're proud to be owned and operated by over 20,000 member owners. Keystone specializes in energy, home heat, agronomy, grain, animal nutrition, and swine production. And we remain centered on the valued relationships that have built and grown the cooperative for 100 years. Just like you, we're proud to back the boilers. Keystone Cooperative, centered on you. This copyrighted broadcast is an exclusive presentation of Learfield under the broadcasting rights granted by Purdue University. Reuse of this presentation is prohibited without the expressed written consent of the university and Learfield. Announcers are provided by Learfield and approved by the university. Halftime at the State Farm Stadium, Glendale, Arizona, where UConn, the number one team in a country, according to the Associated Press Top 25 poll, is leading the number three team in the country, the Purdue Boilermakers, 36-30 here in this national championship game. I'm Rob Blackman. Let's take a look at the halftime statistics presented by Ruoff Mortgage. Ruoff Mortgage is a proud supporter of Purdue basketball. Ruoff's top-notch customer service makes your home ownership dreams an easy reality. Apply online at Ruoff.com. Let's start with the Connecticut Huskies. They 
have their 36 points on 15 of 31 shooting. That's 48.4%. UConn, 3 of 9 from the three-point line, 33.3%. They have attempted only three free throws, making all three for the Huskies. UConn in the first half had seven assists on their 15 made baskets. Three assists for Stephon Castle, two for Tristan Newton. Scoring-wise, it's Tristan Newton leading the way with 11 first-half points. Seven for Donovan Klingen. Seven points to go with three rebounds for Cam Spencer and seven off the bench for Hassan Diara. Four points scored by Stephon Castle. Three total turnovers in the first 20 minutes for UConn. They had two steals. They had three blocked shots, two of those coming from Alex Kiraban. Meanwhile, for our Boilermakers, 13 of 28, 46.4 in that first half shooting. Purdue just attempted two three-point shots. Braden Smith was one for one. Miles Colvin was 0 for one as Purdue was one of two in the three-point shooting category. And Purdue only getting to the foul line four times. Purdue was three of four in free throw shooting. Purdue with three assists, just three assists on the 13 made baskets and all three coming from Braden Smith. Purdue turned it over five times, five players with one turnover apiece. Three block shots for the Boilermakers, Zach Eady with two of the three. Scoring-wise, Zach Eady, 16 points to go with five rebounds. Nine points for Braden Smith. He has three assists and three rebounds. Three points in the game for Lance Jones, two for Trey Kaufman-Wren, and those are the only folks that have scored for the Boilermakers. Four players have done all of the scoring. Fletcher Lawyer, Mason Gillis, Camden Heidi, Miles Colvin, Caleb First have all played, but they have not scored. Rebounding number, we always like to look at that. UConn, 16 rebounds, five offensively. Purdue, 15 rebounds, four offensively. Points off turnovers, seven apiece. Points in the paint, UConn, 20, Purdue, 18. Second chance opportunity points, Purdue, four, UConn, two. Neither team has a fast break point scored. UConn's bench outscoring Purdue, seven to nothing. Coors Light, Mountain Cold Refreshment, made to chill. Official partner of Purdue Athletics 2024, Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Celebrate responsibly. When we come back to State Farm Stadium, Bob Riddell has a look at that out-of-town scoreboard presented by your Central Indiana Honda dealers. This is the Coors Light Halftime Report. UConn 36, Purdue 30. This is Boilermaker Basketball on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. Hancock County, Indiana, located just 15 minutes from downtown Indianapolis near I-70 and I-465, is open for business. Learn why we are one of the fastest growing communities in Indiana. With access to available land, infrastructure, transportation, and a regional airport, join other national brands like Amazon, Carvana, and Walmart, and discover why we are the best-kept secret in central Indiana. This message brought to you by the Hancock County Economic Development Council. Visit us at HancockEDC.com or at 317-477-7241. If you're a Boilermakers fan, you know that scoring big is everything. Few things feel as good as watching your team pass, shoot, and dribble their way to victory. Off the court, you can experience that same feeling with a Magnum tractor from Case IH. Magnum tractors match the power, speed, and strength of the best Boilermakers by helping you net every challenge that comes your way. Score big with a Magnum tractor this season by visiting your local Case IH dealer or go to caseih.com slash Boilermakers to learn more. Boiler up! At Indiana Farm Bureau Insurance, we're good at insurance, but not just any insurance. We're good at fireworks don't go in the attic insurance, hole in window insurance, even guy that shouldn't have a chainsaw but has a chainsaw insurance. Start with Indiana Farm Bureau Insurance and stop knocking on wood. Now's the time for a new Honda. Save thousands with 2.9% financing on a 2024 CRV. Full Honda inventory is here. Cars, SUVs, trucks, vans are all in stock. There's never been a better time to buy a new Honda. Save big with low payments or get your new Honda with 2.9% financing. Search your local Honda dealer today. See dealer for financing details for qualified buyers offer in 4324. Welcome back to the halftime show where the Yukon Huskies lead the Purdue Boilermakers 36 to 30. 
here at halftime of the national championship game. Time now for our out-of-town score segment, and today's out-of-town scores are brought to you by your Central Indiana Honda dealers. We'll first start off with taking a look back at yesterday's women's national championship game, and that was played between the number one seed, South Carolina, and the other number one seed, Iowa Hawkeyes. And unfortunately for Big Ten fans, the Iowa Hawkeyes come up short as the Gamecocks win that game 87-75. to and the South Carolina Gamecocks go undefeated on their way to a national championship. Caitlin Clark, the star guard for the Iowa Hawkeyes, who is set to be probably the number one pick in the WNBA draft to the Indiana Fever this offseason. She ended up with 30 points and eight rebounds in that contest. As far as on the men's side, what's led to this national championship matchup, you had the West Region champion, the four seed Alabama, take on the one seed UConn Huskies on Saturday and the one seed UConn disposed of the Crimson Tide 86 to 72 and then our Purdue Boilermakers took down the NC State Wolfpack NC State coming from the South region and Purdue coming from the Midwest and the Boilermakers were victorious 63 to 50 in that other semifinal drive the road to win with Honda and have fun off the court with the most fun to drive vehicles. Your Central Indiana Honda dealers are proud supporters of Purdue Athletics. We'll take a look at the keys to the second half in just a moment when we return to the Coors Light Halftime Report. This is Boilermaker Basketball on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. You work hard. And at First Farmers Bank and Trust, we work hard for you. Since 1885, we've committed to helping families, businesses, and communities thrive. We're about giving back to the community with below market fees and personalized attention. More at ffbt.com. First Farmers is a proud sponsor of Purdue Athletics. Member FDIC, equal opportunity lender. This is Mason Gillis, Purdue men's basketball. For my friends at the Haldeman Companies, proud supporters of Purdue University. They use the same principles for success that Coach Panner teaches us. The importance of teamwork, execution, and tremendous effort are keys to success. Their team includes farm managers, appraisers, and real estate brokers with the experience, knowledge, and professionalism to help you accomplish your farm goals. Since 1930, if it has anything to do with the business of farming, Haldeman can help. Visit Halderman.com to learn more. Franciscan Health is proud to be the official medical provider for Purdue Athletics. Does a sudden sports injury have you on the bench? We can assist. Franciscan Health sports medicine specialists have mastered a team approach to sports injuries. You'll have access to a network of orthopedic professionals, rehabilitation services, and highly advanced technologies and treatments to get you back out on the field. To learn more, visit franciscanhealth.org slash sportsmedicine. This is your moment, your time to shine, your comeback. You're ready for the next step in your career, and you want an education employers respect. So you're not just going back to school. You're coming back with Purdue Global. Backed by Purdue University, one of the nation's most respected public universities, Purdue Global is built for people who bring their life experience into the online classroom. Purdue Global, Purdue's online university for working adults. Start your comeback today at purdueglobal.edu. Almost time to start the second half. Connecticut leads Purdue 36 to 30. Rob Blackman courtside with my broadcast partner Bobby Riddell. And of course, our on-site engineer Wes Scott is here, as he always is. Ethan Sargent, our in-studio engineer this evening. We thank you for joining us and staying up late with us here on this Monday night as Purdue plays in the national championship game for the first time since 1969. That was back on March the 22nd. Number one ranked UCLA and Lou Alcindor beating sixth ranked Purdue 92 to 72. Purdue played without their big man Chuck Bavis who was injured and missed that contest. Today Purdue's big man is healthy and playing his part, doing his part. And of course Zach Eady who had 16 first half points. Purdue in black, Connecticut in white. Purdue attacks the bucket to our right as we open the second half of play. The Boilermakers with the basketball. I bounce pass to the high right wing to Trey Kaufman-Rin. 
He's in the triple threat position, fakes a dribble handoff, and now throws it inside to Edie, and Klingen got caught from behind, trying to reach in and poke the pass away as it was coming into Edie, and that's the second foul on Donovan Klingen. Well, it was huge for UConn for him to avoid that second foul in the first half, but nice to see him get one here really quick. Lou right lobs, in, uh, lobs in to Edie on that baseline. He'll work on Klingen. He will shoot with his left hand. He'll miss, and then Klingen got the rebound, wrestling it away. Matt Painter thought a foul should have been called down there on Klingen. No foul was called, and now UConn has the possession. Cam Spencer from 15 feet of floater. No, but rebounded Klingen. An offensive rebound for a deep three on the way. Good. Tristan Newton. An offensive rebound leads to a triple. And all of a sudden, it's a nine-point UConn lead, their largest lead of the game, 39-30. Braden Smith, chest pass, high right wing, caught just outside of the arc by Trey Kaufman-Rin. He swings it further left wing. Now it goes to Lance Jones. Bad pass, loose on the floor. Lance dives for it, has it, lost it. Now picked up by Braden Smith, and then he was fouled in the scrum by Cam Spencer. First foul on Spencer. Tough break for Spencer. He was just hustling after a loose ball, but found himself, uh, himself in the wrong place at the wrong time. Yeah, tough break there on the rebound on the other end. Zach Eady has to come out just a little bit to contest that fadeaway jumper from Spencer and that left lawyer underneath on Klingon all by himself. 18.55 remains in the game. Purdue has its largest deficit of the night, 39-30. Braden Smith to the right elbow, bounces inside to Edie. He'll attack Klingon. He tried to dunk it, lost it as he was going in there to dunk it. It slipped out of his fingertips, and UConn has the ball now. Tristan Newton, a step back deep three. That one missed, and it's rebounded Lance Jones. Boy, and then Purdue is almost going to turn it over. No, Braden Smith ran it down before it was an actual turnover. On a drive down low, Trey Kaufman Ridd lays it in. Boy, that wasn't pretty, but it turned out just fine for Purdue. It was going to be a turnover for a moment. Somehow, Braden Smith kept it in his possession. Four points for Trey Kaufman Ridd. Purdue's down 39 32. Wow, that was frantic there. And then Kaufman Ridd almost travels after the shot fake, luckily held the pivot. And then got the easy lane with Klingon in the air. Klingon, high left elbow extended, holding the ball above his head. Now hands it off to his teammate, Castle. Castle will shoot from 15 feet and miss. Lance Jones gobbles up a defensive rebound. That ball missed badly off the back of the rim. Purdue the possession, trailing 39-32. 17.45 remains in the game. Braden Smith will shoot from 15. His shot is missed. He shot it from the right elbow. Cam Spencer rebounds for the Huskies. He lobs it ahead, and it's a layup. Castle was able to get post position down low on Braden Smith. Cam Spencer threw him a beauty of a pass, and it's 41-32, Connecticut. Just a nice seal there by Castle, using his size advantage in a transition opportunity before Purdue's defense gets set. And now an offensive foul. Trey Kaufman Wren was trying to clear space as he was receiving an interior bounce pass. And that's a Boilermaker turnover. Give it right back to Connecticut. UConn leading 41-32. Purdue wants to be physical down there, and that's just a situation where Kaufman Wren, according to the officials, gets a little overzealous there with his physicality on Caravan. 14 in the game for Tristan Newton. Here's Caravan with a ball between the rings. To Cam Spencer at the free throw line. Kick it left corner. Newton a three. This one's long. No good. Tipped out a couple of times. It's at midcourt and will finally be picked up in the backcourt by Tristan Newton. On a run. Here's a blocking foul on Lance Jones. He at the last minute tried to slide in front of Stefan Castle. That's a tough foul to take for Lance because that is his third personal. And now we'll get Mason jo uh, Mason Gillis, I should say, up off of the bench to replace Lance Jones. That's a tough call there for Lance. Lance definitely set before the contact. Castle gets into a Euro step, so the Euro step makes it hit the side of Lance Jones. But Lance is there, fully set for the contact. I think that's a poor call. Free throw, no good. Missed by Stefan Castle, who is a 76% foul shooter. Camden Heidi coming into the game to replace Trey Kaufman Wren. That offensive foul a moment ago on Trey was his second. Blue down 41 32, 16 55 remaining in the game. And at the foul line, Stefan Castle, a McDonald's All American last year out of Covington, Georgia. Second foul shot. He missed them both. How about that? Missed them both. And Mason Gillis rebounds. Purdue catches a break there with a 76% foul shooter missing twice. 
Braden Smith off the screen from Edie at the top of the key. Finds Lawyer who throws it into Edie. Edie on Klingon, spins and shoots and misses, but it's Don't Home on a reload by Camden Heidi coming out of nowhere and punching it home. Wow! That was unbelievable. One-handed tip flush by Camden Heidi. This place is on its feet. 41-34, UConn the lead. Purdue fans are full throat trying to urge on their Boilermakers. Cam Spencer, right elbow, shoots it, it's short, rebounded by whom? Castle, his reload is missed. He'll get a second opportunity and he'll knock it in. Boy, back-to-back -back offensive rebounds for Castle. He missed the first time, he didn't miss the second. UConn 43, Purdue 34. Braden Smith in that black uniform attacking the bucket to the right. In it goes to Edie. Edie on Klingon. He was fouled as he was spinning to the bucket. That's three fouls on Donovan Klingon. Boy, Purdue keeps going to the well, getting that ball inside to Zach Edie. And they have drawn that third foul against Donovan Klingon. 15-54 remains in the game on the Central Indiana Honda Dealer scoreboard. UConn 43, Purdue 34. This is Boilermaker Basketball on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. Keystone Cooperative is centered on delivering the farmer-owned cooperative of the future. Starting today, we're proud to be owned and operated by over 20,000 member owners. Keystone specializes in energy, home heat, agronomy, grain, animal nutrition, and swine production. And we remain centered on the valued relationships that have built and grown the cooperative for 100 years. Just like you, we're proud to back the boilers. Keystone Cooperative, centered on you. We boiler makers show our pride in a number of ways. From a Purdue flag flying high on game day to a black and gold tie worn to the office. That loyalty is built on precious memories, time-honored traditions, and lifelong friendships. It's everlasting, and it stays with you wherever you go. So whether you're at Mackey Arena, your hometown grocery store, or across the country, the pride is always there. And now with the Purdue Federal Visa Signature Card, you have one more way to show your pride. Purdue Federal, the official credit card for Purdue fans everywhere. Federally insured by NCUA. I get paid to do this. How cool is this? Wow. <laughs> like you get paid to be a coach. And for me, I don't think there's a place out there better for me than Purdue University. Hi, I'm Kate Young, host of This is Purdue, the official podcast of Purdue University. Over the last three years, my conversations with Boilermakers have been serious, informative, and in the case of that exchange with former Purdue basketball coach Gene Cady and current head coach Matt Painter, downright fun. Be sure to follow This is Purdue on your favorite podcast app or on YouTube. Now's the time for a new Honda. Save thousands with 2.9% financing on a 2024 CRV. Full Honda inventory is here. Cars, SUVs, trucks, vans are all in stock. There's never been a better time to buy a new Honda. Save big with low payments or get your new Honda with 2.9% financing. Search your local Honda dealer today. See dealer financing details for qualified buyers offer in 2024. This is Chase Martin, and you're listening to Purdue Basketball. Purdue men's basketball postseason sponsored by BW Fusion. Say hello to the most powerful gallon in agriculture from BW Fusion, and goodbye to traditional crop nutrition. Find out how to build your most powerful gallon in ag today at mpga.ag. BW Fusion, proud presenting sponsor of Purdue men's basketball postseason. Rob Blackman and Bobby Riddell, courtside, 15.54 to go in this national championship game. Connecticut leads Purdue 43-34. How about nine offensive rebounds for Connecticut? They've turned it into seven second-chance points. Well, the first five minutes of this second half were going to be huge, and right now UConn up three through the first four minutes. Purdue needs now with Donovan Klingon on the bench have to make a little push here before you start to get too late into this half. Purdue does inbound the ball baseline right as we're back to action. They throw it into Edie. Here comes a double team, ball side. Purdue throws it out to Lawyer and throws it right back into Edie. Now to Heidi, but through his hands, and he couldn't get to it, and it's going to be over and back. That pass coming out of the post from Edie was too hot to handle, and Edie, I saw Zach, pointed at his chest and told Camden Heidi, that's my fault, bad pass. Purdue turnover gives it right back to the UConn Huskies. Well, similar to Marcus 
Domas with Illinois. They brought Cam Spencer on a late double with Klingon on the bench. And it just threw off a little bit of the timing. Seven turnovers now for the Boilermakers. Spencer a three off a catch from the left wing. No. Rebound is poked out of bounds. Baseline left. Last touched by Braden Smith as he was battling Tristan Newton to try to grab a rebound. 20 on the shot clock here for Connecticut. They throw to Stefan Castle high left perimeter. Now to Daiwa. Samson Johnson who subbed in for Klingon at the last dead ball and he has a catch and a dunk. They ran a lob coming in from the right baseline for Samson Johnson, the 6'10 junior, and he has his first scoring of the game on a two-handed slam dunk. Well, Johnson shoots 72% from the field, and you see why. Heidi faking a three, top of the key. Johnson guarding Edie. Here's a three from Mason Gillis, missed it left wing. Rebounded by Heidi, and a foul on the rebound. It's on whom? Zach Edie. Edie collided with Cam Spencer as they were both trying to grab that rebound that went long. I don't even know if that thing might have even grazed the rim, but the foul on Edie, his first. But what's happened now is because Samson Johnson is into the game, the backup center, now when the ball goes into Edie, they are doubling. First time we've seen them double tonight. Yeah, but certainly something they're going to, they're not going to let Samson Johnson guard him one-on-one, -on -one, which makes sense because Zach... Just substantially more size. 11 point lead for the Connecticut Huskies, the reigning national champions with 1440 remaining. Newton will lob again for Johnson. He catches and dunks again. Back to back dunks on the flip ups to the rim for Samson Johnson. And this is the largest lead of the game 47 34 for Connecticut. Just such a difficult thing to guard. Braden Smith trying to work his way off a screen, top of the key for Meaty. Picks up the dribble, left elbow, feeds Gillis. Gillis into Edie on Johnson. Here comes that double team. He shoots and was fouled by Samson Johnson. Now three fouls on Samson Johnson, and that will send to the line Zach Edie. He will have two free throw opportunities here. Purdue trailed 36-30 at the half. Right now, Purdue's down 47-34. Purdue's got to talk about how you're going to defend this Johnson lob action where he sets the screen and dives. Zach Eady just getting too far detached from that vertical lob threat. And Zach Eady's first free throw is good. This is a bit, you know, this is obviously, this is pretty much the, the game right here. You're down 12 points. We had a similar stretch in the first half against Tennessee where you fell down by 11 and then Purdue was able to punch right back with a huge run of its own. You know, if you're Purdue, you basically got to go on one of those. You could use a kill shot, right? You could use a kill shot type run to get back in this game. Edie missed the second foul shot, but uh, it will be erased from the record because Samson Johnson stepped into the lane too early. So Zach will get a second free throw opportunity here. 47-35, Connecticut leading Purdue. Second foul shot for Edie. He made it, so he takes advantage of the uh, extra opportunity. Purdue down 47-36. Purdue fans on their feet trying to implore the Boilermakers to mount a comeback. Castle, top side. Paramatic three from deep. No good. Spank ball, but rebounded by Spencer. He'll shoot a three off a reload. No good. Long rebound. Foul is called, I think, on Zach Edie. Fighting for that rebound with Samson Johnson, and that is the call. Edie and Johnson fighting for rebounding position. Boy, I tell you what, these Connecticut Huskies go strong to the offensive glass. We saw in the film session, they oftentimes don't even have a safety where one guy gets back. They have all five guys crashing the glass, or at least the four other guys that don't shoot. And an illegal screen opened up Cam Spencer for a wide open three. He missed it. But it wouldn't have counted anyway as Samson Johnson picked up his fourth foul with an illegal screen. And he'll have to go to the bench. He'll be replaced by Donovan Klingon, who has three fouls. He was clipping Lance Jones on the screen, doing so illegally. Oh, yeah, you can, now that we see the replay, he definitely moved on the screen. Connecticut 47, Purdue 36, Purdue the ball with 13.45 remaining. Braden Smith to the baseline. Floater, no, and trying to dunk it home. Edie, and what do we have? Yes, they're going to count it. Yes, they'll count it. As Edie was trying to dunk it back into the basket, basket interference called against the defense. I'm not sure which Husky will be called for. 
the basket interference, but the basket counts for Zach Eady. There was definitely some hand of a UConn player up inside the cylinder or grabbing the net. There was definitely oh, yeah, some movement. Oh, yeah, it was movement. Klingen. Yeah, Klingen, yep. you're right, had his hand inside of the net. We had a good look at a replay here courtside. The refs said they're going to look at it next dead ball, but I think that's going to count still. 47-38. Purdue trailing the UConn Huskies. We're at 13-20 remaining in the game. Here's Tristan Newton to the right baseline. Kick it out for Caravan. He'll drive in. Give it to Spencer. He'll attack the basket. Shoot a wild right-handed hook shot, and that thing went into the bucket. Cam Spencer, he had seven early points, had not scored since until that wild layup right there. I thought Braden Smith moved his feet pretty well and cut off Alex Caravan for a potential charge, but there was no call. Well, the Makers down 49-38 with 12.50 to go and a foul on a double down. Edie had the ball near the left block. The double down came aggressively from Cam Spencer, and he gets hit with his second foul. Purdue will inbound baseline right. Back into the game, here's Hassan Diara, the senior from Queens, New York. Seeing the replay, probably a good no call on that caravan drive where Braden hit the deck. Probably not quite enough contact to warrant the call. Blue with the ball in the hands of Edie, throws it way out near the timeline, left wing where it's caught by Braden Smith. Smith left side to Gillis, inside to Edie, spinning and shooting on Klingon. That one no good, and then Gillis came in aggressively to try to get a rebound. And He's called for the foul as he uh, just bowled over Cam Spencer. First foul on Mason Gillis. Good sportsmanship by Gillis and Heidi to help up Spencer off of the deck. Into the game will come Miles Colvin. He'll replace Braden Smith. 49 for Connecticut, 38 for Purdue. 12.35 to go in this game, and the clock is ticking. Cam Spencer playing point guard right now with this unit. Dribbling to the high right wing and bounce passing it further right wing where it's caught by Tristan Newton. Top of the key to Klingon. Dribble handoff now in the hands of Cam Spencer. Spencer using a screen from Klingon. Throw it further right side where Caravan will fake a three and now give it to Newton. Shot clock at four. Newton's going to have to get busy. He'll attack the rim. Shot is good against Zach Eady. What a take. Tristan Newton with a left-handed banker over the outstretched arms of Zach Eady. What a shot. I have no idea. Newton got that thing around Zach's right arm that was outstretched. Purdue's down 51-38. In a danger zone here are the Boilermakers. Inside to Edie. Working on Klingon. Here comes the double team. Purdue will swing it to Colvin for a corner three. It's long off the back of the rim. Rebounded out of there by Tristan Newton of UConn. Huskies on the run. Diara in the corner. Caravan at three. It is short. Rebounded Edie, then taken away by Spencer. But the reason he took it away is because he fouled. Three fouls on Cam Spencer. Timeout on the floor. 11.31 to go in the game. On the Central Indiana Honda Dealers scoreboard. Connecticut 51, Purdue 38. This is Boilermaker Basketball on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. Talking on the phone is difficult if you've been exposed to loud noises over time. Combat veterans, factory workers, farmers, gun and motorcycle enthusiasts can have trouble hearing on the telephone. Relay Indiana helps return clarity to your phone conversations. Relay Indiana also provides free loaned equipment to those who qualify. Get the CapTel Caption Telephone from Relay Indiana. Visit RelayIndiana.com now. Water damage from a busted pipe can be a real nightmare in these frigid temps. For over 40 years, Hayes & Sons has been restoring water damage in Indiana homes and businesses. They'll help you navigate your insurance claim and get your life back on track. So, when a water disaster strikes, tell your insurance agent you want Hayes & Sons for your restoration work. Visit HayesAndSons.com for more information. Family owned, women owned, serving Crater Lafayette for over 33 years. Shuttles to and from Indianapolis and O'Hare airports 365 days a year. Make your reservations now at LafayetteLimo.com. Charters of all sizes anywhere in the continental USA. Lafayette Limo, proud sponsor of Purdue Athletics. Just sit back and let us drive. There's no need to compromise your ride to relaxation. Lafayette Limo. At Indiana Farm Bureau Insurance, we're good at insurance. 
but not just any insurance. We're good at... No, 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 no. Did you forget the parking brake? Yes, you forgot the parking brake. Insurance. When the forecast calls for cheese ball size hail insurance. Even shouldn't have parked under that tree. Insurance. Start with Indiana Farm Bureau insurance and stop knocking on wood. Don't miss a moment of Purdue basketball during the NCAA tournament this year on our network of radio affiliates. Also, out-of-market fans can listen to exclusive national coverage by Westwood One plus our broadcast through the multicast option on the Varsity Network app. Download for free in your app store. Catch all the action from anywhere. We know many of you have done that during this tournament run here for the Boilermakers, and we say a huge thank you to you for doing that. Purdue is trailing 51-51 to 38, 13-point deficit. Largest deficit Purdue's had all year was 16. That was in the loss at Nebraska back on January the 9th, and that ended up being the final margin of victory, actually, for Nebraska. They beat Purdue by 16 that day, 88-72. Purdue breaks the huddle with Miles Colvin, Braden Smith, Lance Jones, Mason Gillis, and Zach Eady. Purdue does have the possession. Now, the team fouls for UConn are at 7, so that is good news for Purdue with 11.31 remaining. But Zach Eady at the line here for a 1-1, one and one, so yeah, let's see if Purdue can maybe make some foul shots to get themselves back into this one. Well, hopefully Zach can get a couple free throws to go down. The first one... It was an air ball. Air ball. Did not reach the rim. And that'll give the ball back to Connecticut because he's just one for five from the field here in this second half and with them taking away the threes and Zach not being as effective that's what's allowed was, uh, the UConn Huskies to pull this large deficit right now on Purdue 51-38 and Connecticut has the ball Caravan to Diara stolen away from Braden by Braden Smith now it's into the backcourt now Braden dives for it hands to Edie and Purdue does have the takeaway what a play by Braden Smith on the ball Driving Lance Jones, stopping at the block, pouncing into Edie. Edie on Klingon, gets his feet underneath him, and they're going to call traveling. As Zach tried to get his feet underneath him against Klingon, he's called for traveling, and that gives the ball right back to UConn. So Purdue gets a takeaway defensively, but gives it right back to the Huskies. I would need to see the replay. We got one right here in front of us. Let's see if he ends up moving the left foot. Oh, the left foot stays still yeah. after he established it. I don't see a travel there. What a maker is now defensively with 10.48 to go. Going to need to really slow down UConn if they want to have a chance now. Clinging, high left elbow extended. Holds the ball above his head. Gives to Castle. Castle drives to the block. Shoots a short floater. It's an air ball. Got his own rebound. Out to Diara for a three. It's no good. Rebounded Zach Eady of the Boilermakers. Eady, 20 points, 8 rebounds. Boilermakers down 51-38. Purdue with a ball in their black uniforms with the gold trim, the old gold. Braden Smith is fouled by Diara. He went strong to the bucket. Draws the third foul on Hassan Diara. This will be a shooting foul. Two free throws for Braden Smith. Braden had nine first half points. He has not scored here in the second half. Well, this would be a good time for Purdue to start cashing in at that free throw line. Knowing Purdue will shoot, be shooting free throws the rest of the way here. First foul shot, Braden Smith. Braden on the year, 79.7% from the free throw line. Braden should really showed really good patience there on that drive as he had Diara on his hip. And just a little bit of stutter step, change of speed, change of direction to get the foul. Second free throw also good for the former Indiana Mr. Basketball out of Westfield High School. 51 to 40, 11 point lead Connecticut. Purdue fans again on their feet. Chest pass left wing Tristan Newton. Top of the key, pass to DR. Off the screen right side for Klingon. DR to the left elbow. Now it goes to Newton. Newton was going to look at a three, decided against it. He'll work his way off the screen near the top of the key. Lost it, got it back. Gives to Caravan for an open three. Good. Alex Caravan, it's his first made shot of the game. A 39% three-point shooter, and it's a 14-point UConn lead. 
That's just a freshman mistake there from Miles Colvin. A poor gamble, leaving Caravan on the wing. Driving Lawyer, stopping right block, leaning in, shooting a floater. No good. Caravan defended. Caravan comes up with a rebound. UConn on the run. Diara layup good. Timeout Purdue. Transition points have been hard to find tonight for UConn, but that right there was UConn at its best. Off and running. They lead 56 to 40. Purdue timeout with 9.27 remaining. This equals the largest deficit Purdue has faced all season long. On the Central Indiana Honda Dealer scoreboard, Connecticut leads Purdue 56 40. This is Boilermaker Basketball on the Global Sport ne- uh, Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. You know you've got a comeback in you. When you take the next step, you're going to make it count for your career, for your family, for your life. You can earn a degree you're proud of with Purdue Global. Purdue Global is backed by Purdue University, one of the nation's most respected and innovative public universities. This is your chance. This is your opportunity. This is your comeback. Purdue Global, Purdue's online university for working adults. Start your comeback today at purdueglobal.edu. Hey, Purdue fans. Say hello to the most powerful gallon in agriculture from BW Fusion and say goodbye to traditional crop nutrition. We've simplified product selection to create a personalized gallon that's crafted for your specific crop, problem areas, budget, and more. It enhances your farm's profitability, 30-plus years of crop nutrition data, and industry leadership. Build your most powerful gallon in ag with BW Fusion today at mpga.ag. Let's get back to the action. Boiler up. Franciscan Health is proud to be the official medical provider for Purdue Athletics. Does a sudden sports injury have you on the bench? We can assist. Franciscan Health sports medicine specialists have mastered a team approach to sports injuries. You'll have access to a network of orthopedic professionals, rehabilitation services, and highly advanced technologies and treatments to get you back out on the field. To learn more, visit franciscanhealth.org slash sportsmedicine. That to-do list you have needs one more thing. Chill. It's an easy thing to do. Just crack open an ice-cold Coors Light and chill. Take the afternoon off and binge watch anything. Go to happy hour and stay for a couple hours. Who's counting anyways? Or hang out with just your dog because you've had enough human interaction this week. Whatever you do, do it with a Coors Light. Mountain cold refreshment made to chill. 2024 Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Celebrate responsibly. This is PJ Thompson, and you're listening to Purdue Basketball. Hey, for all you golfers out there, the Ackerman Allen course at Burke Boilermaker Complex is open. Come out and enjoy an early spring round. 2024 membership still available. Book your tee time or join today at purdugolf.com. 16-point lead for Connecticut. Largest deficit Purdue has faced all season, 16. They also trailed by 16 at Nebraska. That was way back on January the 9th. Tristan Newton has been his usual outstanding self. 16 points, 5 rebounds, 6 assists, no turnovers for the first-team All-American for Connecticut. Purdue Zach Eady, 20 points, 8 rebounds, 2 block shots for the National Player of the Year. Purdue does have the ball going left to right here in the second half in those black uniforms, but facing now an uphill battle against the number one team in the country, the Huskies. Braden Smith to the right wing will stop, fake a jumper from 18, bounce it into Edie. He will turn and bank it in on Klingen. Klingen got buried deep and then just kind of backed off. He didn't want to pick up his fourth foul. Blues down 56-42. Great job there with the bounce pass from Braden Smith and Zach. You could tell a little rested coming out of the timeout with a good finish over the top of Klingon. It's go time now for the Boilers. Less than nine minutes remaining in the game. UConn trying to be a back-to-back national champ. First team to do that since Florida did it in 2006-2007. Klingon fakes a dribble handoff. Instead gives to Caravan. Caravan kick it right wing for an open three for Castle. Good. Stefan Castle. His first made three of the game, but it comes at a good time for Connecticut. He has 11 points. That matches his season average. And now it's 59-42, Connecticut. You've got to give up something when you play a team as good as Connecticut. You're going to give up those threes to Castle. Braden Smith from the right elbow, missing long, clinging, rebounding for Connecticut. We're down to 8-15 to go in the game. 
17-point lead for the Huskies of UConn. They have won their games in the NCAA tournament by an average of 25 a game. Into the corner it goes. Open three is on the way. This one in and out for Castle. How did that ball not stay down? Purdue rebounds. Lobbing ahead to Colvin in transition. Had to stop on the block because he didn't catch it cleanly. Now dribbles out of trouble. Purdue throws it into 80, and it's a foul from behind. Klingen tried to sneak in from behind on the entry pass to poke it away from Edie, and the foul goes against Donovan Klingen. This will be a one-and-one one when we return to State Farm Stadium. UConn 59, Purdue 42. 7.52 remains in the game on the Central Indiana Honda Dealers scoreboard. This is Boilermaker Basketball on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. Hi, Katie Geralds here, head women's basketball coach at Purdue University. I'm a proud graduate of our College of Liberal Arts. My degree prepared me to connect with people and communicate well on and off the court, skills I use every day. I'm excited about the Degree Plus program, which allows all Purdue students to earn a Bachelor of Science degree and one from Liberal Arts and still graduate in four years. This and one can be a game changer. Check out the College of Liberal Arts Degree Plus program to see if this and one is a winner for you. We boiler makers show our pride in a number of ways, from a Purdue flag flying high on game day to a black and gold tie worn to the office. That loyalty is built on precious memories, time-honored traditions, and lifelong friendships. It's everlasting, and it stays with you wherever you go. So whether you're at Mackey Arena, your hometown grocery store, or across the country, the pride is always there. And now with starts with a trip to Big Y, your family market. It's more than food. It's my Big Y. We bleed blue. This is the Yukon Sports Network from Learfield. of lung cancer can be pretty scary, especially if you're one of approximately 8 million current or former smokers at high risk. That's why SaveByTheScan.org wants you to know that now there's a breakthrough low-dose CT scan that can detect lung cancer early, and it only takes 60 seconds. You stop smoking, now start screening. For an easy quiz to see if you're eligible, visit SaveByTheScan.org. It could save your life. SaveByTheScan.org is brought to you by the American Lung Association's Lung Force Initiative and the Ad Council into the building for the first time after the shooting. It was crippling, but it had to be preserved. In response to the Pulse nightclub shooting that affected the LGBTQ community, Barbara Pona, owner of Pulse, founded the One Pulse Foundation to honor Pulse victims and survivors. If you're an ally of this community, speak out. There are more of us together than apart. It is the power of love in its rawest form. Join the fight for LGBTQ acceptance. Learn how at lovehasnolabels.com. Brought to you by Love Has No Labels and the Ad Council. Points in the paint so far. This one, 34 to 26. UConn has taken the advantage here in the second half. As we all know, under the basket, prime real estate. Points in the paint brought to you by Lewis Real Estate, the exclusive real estate company of UConn Athletics. Looking to buy or sell, call 860-404-2655. So Samson Johnson will come back in the game. He's got four fouls. He replaces Donovan Klingen, who's got his fourth foul. Huskies really treading on thin ice here. It's a good thing they got that big lead, 59-42. to 42. We have 7.52 remaining. All right, Edie goes to the line for his seventh free throw attempt. Last one, air ball. Of the game, and he drops that one in. He's now 5 of 7. Back-to-back -back player of the year, Zach Edie. Had 40 against Tennessee earlier this uh, in the tournament. 22 rebounds against Minnesota. He's had some huge numbers. Six straight double doubles, makes the second free throw. Nation's leading score and second leading rebound. All right, full court pressure. Spencer in trouble. Gets it ahead to Castle. Castle now to Newton. It's two on one. Newton alley oop. Oh, Samson Johnson missed a one hand dunk. And Purdue gets the rebound. Seven and a half to go. Braden Smith to the front court. Cuts into the paint. Fade away. Bounce pass down low. And Edie able to dunk. 79-44. Johnson playing with four fouls. He really couldn't even guard him. He really wasn't close to him. Huskies did a great job on the press break. Just missed the layup. All right, Castle in trouble against the press. Here's Caravan ahead to Newton. They get it into front court on the left sideline. Tristan being guarded there by Miles Colvin. Now it's Castle between the rings. Starts to his right. 
Kicks it left to Samson Johnson in the cutting Caravan. And Caravan flushes it. Two-hand dunk by Alex Caravan. 61-46 UConn. Seven minutes to go. And the assist pass came from the dunk man Johnson. All right, here's Smith on a bounce on the left wing to Coleman. Coleman guarded by Spencer, who deflects it off him, and they turn him over. How about Spencer? Not known for his defensive prowess. He creates the ninth turnover of the game by Purdue. Colvin turns it over. Patriots fans might know his father, Roosevelt Colvin, former Purdue football player, two-time Super Bowl champion. Yep. Here is Newton. I think it was going to be Caravan in bottom on the sideline in front of Matt Painter. And he gets it into Castle. He is fouled by Lawyer. And that is the sixth team foul on Purdue with 6.45 to go. UConn, next foul on UConn will be double bonus for Purdue, so they've got to be careful there. They also have Chase Martin. His dad is Quanzo Martin, former Purdue star and head coach at three different places. And he's got another new job. They're going to get it into Spencer. Spencer doubles him in the backcourt, gives to Caravan. Now well, they hand it over to Newton. Newton out near the timeline, guarded by Colvin. Spins into the paint, backdoor cut. Spencer couldn't get a shot off. Passes out to Caravan now. It's Newton. They got 12 to shoot. Newton starts right at the right hash. And now he starts back to his left. Step back jumper by Newton. Front rim, no good. Rebound, Caravan. Back to Castle. They get another possession. And they're working a lot of time off the clock now. UConn plus nine on the boards. Here's Newton. At the timeline, six minutes to go on the left hash. Cutter by Colvin, starts to his right. Cutter is Castle. Castle laid it in left-handed. Edie couldn't get up and block it. Steph with a quick layup. UConn advances the lead, 63-46. Seven assists for Newton. Johnson trying to guard Edie. It's Braden Smith outside the arc. He gets it to Edie in the high post right. He backs him down. He gives it up to Lawyer for three. Lawyer back rim. And a foul is called. Who's it on? Who's it on? This is going to be tricky. Oh, it's on Samson Johnson. And that's it for him. Uh, well, if he said 35, Jeff Anderson, I believe he did. Well, this will be the third time he's fouled out. Samson, by far, leads the team and fouls committed now 118 on the year. So uh, I think they're getting the word to Samson that it's his fifth. So, he had, so you, you got five and a half minutes to go in this game. And so Sampson's going to have to leave. He had four points on a pair of back-to-back -back dunks earlier this half from Newton. And Sampson Johnson. Is this right, Wayne? Has he played five minutes in this game? Well, I, remember, I he, got, that's correct, he played a minute it? Well, he played a minute in the first half and got two fouls. So wow. he hasn't played that much in the second half. Actually, it's, it is right because he came in when Klingon got his fourth foul at 7.52, right, which is about two minutes ago. And Klingon's not coming in. It's going to be Caravan trying to guard Edie. Good luck with that. He's been really good playing the five in these emergency situations, but this, <laughs> this is above and beyond. This is, no question. Edie, first of two. And he missed it. Back rim. Zach Eady had seven blocks this year against Nebraska. He's had some big numbers. He's six of nine from the line. Caravan, rather, Klingon is sitting on the floor looking. And Eady makes the second one. It's 63 47, 16 point advantage. 5.38 to go. And UConn, Caravan, Newton, Diara, Spencer, and Castle. Castle runs the baseline and he gets it into Diara. They double Diara back to Castle. Castle in the front court to Spencer. Ahead to Newton. Newton in the paint will take some time off on the right sideline. He could have attacked, but it's more important how to use the clock. No question. He's guarded there by Heidi. Drives to his left. Pulls up. Fires to Spencer. Spencer back to the right on the screen by Caravan. Time running out. Spencer in the paint. Fadeaway shot. Good. Oh, baby. A patented fadeaway by Spencer. Oh, that's beautiful. He's got 11. He had a game winner against Purdue last year when he played for Rutgers. This was another big one. And they go down to Edie. Caravan trying to guard him. Edie drives a left shoulder. And Caravan gets whacked in the head. Oh, man. Right in the face he got hit, and he lays it up with a little jump hook. Pointing at his nose. Man. He's, he's also talking to one of the officials, uh, Oglesby, about that. He says, wait a minute, where's the foul? I think he's got to fall down. What else can you do? 
I mean, you got to flop or something just to prove. It. Look at this. On the replay, Edie works him. Oh, man. left shoulder. Right in the face. Wow. Who says? Who said basketball is in a tough game? I'll tell you what. You play Zach Edie, you're coming out of here with some bruises. You've got leading 65 to 49. This is the fifth, the final championship game played between the Big Ten and the Big East. Uh, Villanova had the last victory over Michigan. 2018 TV put up a graphic at halftime the solar eclipse was actually just Zach Eady standing up <laughs> this dude is an unusual player but he's a good oh, player certainly is Tristan Newton leading the way for UConn with 16 Steph Castle now has 13 Castle at halftime only had four so he's had nine in the second half UConn doing a job on the boards weighing 33 25 plus eight against this team which is used to out-rebounding its opponents by at least nine. 11.7 11, 11. on the year, number two in the nation, and UConn has the edge on the glass. They're so relentless, it's been that way all year long. Zach Eady has been mentioned in the same breath as Patrick Ewing and uh, David Robinson and what he's done in this tournament. He's just having another great tournament. UConn looking to get in. Uh, they get it to DR. He's double-teamed for the moment. And gives it up to Spencer, ahead to Castle, and now it's Caravan in the front court to Newt. And Newton will take more time off. Out near the timeline. Gives it up to Caravan. Caravan steps into a three and missed it. And a rebound, Purdue. Here comes Smith quickly to the front court. Still four and a half to go. Long way to go. Smith gives it in the near corner to Heidi. Drives in the paint on Castle. Can't get a shot off. Gives to Edie with a left-hand hook. He missed. And it's rebounded by Diara. Wow. That was point blank. I don't know how he missed that. Edie now, 11 of 21. How long will Klingon stay on the bench? He can stay there the way that he's shooting and the way UConn is still defending him. Thank you, Alex Caravan. All right. Member of the coaching staff, Wayne Norman, stepping in with some strategy. All right, here's New. Now near the timeline, front court left, guarded by Braden Smith. Cuts into the paint. He attacks Edie. Now he backs away. Down to three. Got to shoot. Steps in. Shoots. Misses. But Edie fouled him. Tristan Newton is tricky. Needy has committed his third. We're going to get free throws by Newton when we return. Two free throws coming up. UConn leading 65 to 49. Introducing Sparked Energy by Duncan. Energy for the fun of it. Available in two full-on delicious flavors. Berry Burst and Peach Sunshine. A revitalizing burst of caffeine, vitamins, and minerals. Fruit flavored. Contains 0% fruit juice. Caffeine from caffeine and guarana. Participation may vary. Limited time offer. Terms apply. Coach Hurley just had a cordial discussion with all three officials, unlike the more contentious ones of earlier. Cordial. I've never heard that word in the broadcast, but there it is. From Brown Paint, Harris and Scott, time out on the floor, 3.50 to go. Sounds like our pregame production meeting is cordial. 65-49, UConn with the lead here on Learfield. Are you traveling out of Bradley Airport and need a safe, reliable place to park your car? Trust your vehicle to LazFly Off Airport Parking, located on Route 75 in Windsor Locks. They have both valet and self-park options to fit any budget. LazFly is open 24 hours a day and will get you to the airport on time, every time. Join their loyalty program to earn points for free parking and be sure to ask about their corporate discounts. Save 20% by pre-booking online at lazfly.com. LazFly is the official parking company and a proud supporter of UConn Athletics. At KeyBank, we know a small moment like, Huh, what's it like to have a yard? Can lead to an even bigger question like, Am I ready to buy a home? And that's the type of moment where we'll meet you, prepared to talk about everything you need to know when applying for a mortgage, so you can try to turn those backyard dreams into reality. Paul? Yes? Question. Are you a hammock person? You know, I think I might be. For every financial need, we'll meet you in the moment. Key Bank opens doors. NMLS 399797, Equal Housing Lender. College sports fans now have access to hundreds of weekly podcasts that zero in on the college sports world. Now available in the Varsity Podcast Network and part of the new Varsity app. The app is free and available from wherever you get your favorite apps. Download the Varsity app today to have access to hundreds of national podcasts as well as your favorite team-focused podcasts. The Varsity Podcast Network, now available for free on the Varsity app. Download from the App Store and listen today. This is UConn Men's Basketball. Now back to our Big Y broadcast location at State Farm Stadium. 
Stay with us after the game of the Hard Auto Group post-game show. We got game highlights, interviews, final stats, and scores all coming your way, courtesy of the Hard Auto Group. Shop Heart Auto Group. We treat you like family and are only a heartbeat away. Heartcars.com. Well, Mike, I gave that stat at halftime that the last eight games, you kind of the second half has shot 57.5% from the floor. Well, they're not doing that today. Second half, they're 13 of 29, 45% for the game, 47%. But Purdue in the second half, shooting 6 of 18, 33%. They're down to 41%. So Huskies getting enough field goals when they need it, but they're also pulling away in this game because their defense in the second half has been lights out. And Purdue, a 41% three-point shooting team, second in the nation, has only taken five threes. They are one of five. Remember that first half on Saturday night? Eight for 11 for Alabama? Well, UConn tightened it up in the second half, and it's continued tonight. Yeah, the Huskies with uh, Tristan Newton going to the line. And Newton's first free throw is up and good. And Tristan now leading the way with 17 points. Alex Caravan, who got the assist a little while ago from Tristan Newton. No, that came from Samson Johnson. But anyway, Caravan repeatedly has said to us and others, he says, Tristan Newton's the best point guard in the country. Well, he got the Koozie Award, which is what that signifies, but he's been lights out, outstanding again tonight. And, uh, Newton's second one is up and good. He rises to the occasion. He really does. Huskies, the only team since 99 to play in six of these national championship games. Here they are, leading 67-49. Braden Smith driving on DR, and he's called for a foul. Yeah, he pushed him from behind, a little bit of a flop. And Diara's got four. Uh, UConn is just hanging in there in terms of the foul situation. And as long as they stay in control of this game, Klingon will stay on the bench. Caravan stays at the five with 342 remaining. So it's going to be Braden Smith on the line. He's played well here, 11 points. And he misses a free throw. They've been two for two. He's an 80% free throw shooter. They had a big first half, only two points in the second half. First in Purdue history. You may have mentioned this earlier in assists. 278 makes the second one. And your score is 67 to 50, UConn. 340 to go in the game as Castle has to beat full court pressure. And he got it in, but it's deflected out of bounds. And wait a minute, Newton touched it apparently. Purdue gets the turnover. Well, not a good thing for the Huskies in that case. The press finally works. UConn had broken it pretty well the last five minutes or so. But only six turnovers for UConn. At the final four now, they have a total of ten turnovers. They get it into Edie. High post left guarded by Caravan. Pitches it outside to Gillis. Now in the hands of Lance Jones. Lance Jones cuts the left off the dribble. Gives to Gillis. Down low to Edie. Working on Caravan. Oh, he bounces him all. <laughs> Bounced him back about three feet and then laid it in left-handed. Wow. It was that shoulder thing again, like before when he got him in the nose. Yeah, you're 7'4", your shoulder's about seven <laughs> feet off the ground. <laughs> uh, you caught across the timeline to New uh, Diara, rather. Diara on the right sideline, double-teamed, gives it a Caravan. Caravan over to Spencer on the right sideline. Three minutes to go in the game. Spencer looking to set it up. And... We get a warning for the two coaches, I think, for being outside the coaching box, I think. Matt Painter, I bumped into him yesterday, and I said, hey, you played against UConn back in 92. You remember that game? He says, yeah, I had two field goals and two free throws. Oh, Dan Hurley stepped on the court. That's what happened. All right, here's Lawyer kicking it right to Lance Jones, blocked by Spencer. Down low to Edie. Trying to kick it back to Lance Jones. He attacks inside. He lays it up and in. 67-54. 2.46 to go. And I think Klingon's going to come back in here. I'll tell you what, Caravan has a really tough assignment. Trying to go against a 7-4 man. So that's a 5-0 run now for Purdue. Husky's nope. still out scoring them 31-24 to in the second half. So in that game in 92 is the Hall of Fame Classic season opener. 92-93, Purdue beat UConn 73-69. Glenn Robinson had 30 points and 9 rebounds. Danielle Marshall got hurt in that game, played just 17 minutes at 8 points. Brian Fair out of Phoenix, Arizona, South Mountain High School, is here in this arena tonight. He had 15 points for the Huskies, but again, Matt Painter had 6 points, 3 rebounds, and 5 assists. So I, I mentioned that to him yesterday, and I was surprised he remembered 
that 92 game that he had two field goals and two free throws for his six points. He says, when you score 495 career points, you remember every one of your baskets. Yeah. Come on, Wayne. You remember everything from 50 years ago. Why are you surprised at Matt Painter uh, missing a layup and remembering? I remember every one of the baskets I scored. I know. It's it easy because there aren't It starts any. at zero. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, UConn. By beating Alabama, went to 5-1 and one in national semifinals. They're here play, trying to play for their sixth national championship. Uh, six overall would be uh, amazing. In these championship games, they're 5-0 and oh coming into this. So you know, the Huskies with 36 wins on the year have th- two minutes and 46 seconds to navigate. Klingon not in the game, still Caravan at the five. They're going to leave Caravan in there. I guess maybe a, uh, an extra ball handler against the pressure. That Maybe that's what they're thinking. And Newton will inbound the ball. Or rather, Diara. He can run the baseline after the main basket. They get it to Newton. He's double teamed. And he's fouled quickly. And that is uh, going to put Newton on the line shoot one and one. So it looks like that's going to be Purdue's strategy. Stop the clock immediately. Hope for missed free throws. <laughs> As Klingon is going to go back in a ball game here. Newton four for, for four DR. from the line in this game in the last 12 games, 83 percent, 80 on the season. His uh, free throws and attempts are both career highs. But uh, the Huskies have been really good from the line lately. As the last seven games, they've been 79 percent free throw shooting. That'll win you some games. Yeah, Newton five of seven. Or the team five for seven in this game. And Tristan makes the first one. Now five for five in the game. I just bring up what I've said several times in the last couple of days, including tonight. It's amazing. Not just in championship games this year and last year, but in certain games of the year. You need a big play, somehow Newton finds a way to get it done. He came up huge against San Diego State last year. He's been great tonight. And remember Kansas, the road loss? Oh, man. Oh, man. He kept him in it. He did. Marty makes both free throws, 69-54. Smith drives it down to the baseline left. Picks up his dribble, goes down low to Edie. Edie put it up, and he dunked it that time as Klingon had to allow it. And the score, 69-56. They'll go to Edie every possession these final two and a half minutes. All right, they get it to Caravan. He gets the pressure ahead to Spencer. Spencer into the front court, guarded there by Gillis. And now Spencer in the far corner wants a timeout. With the 214 remaining, UConn, 214 away from making history. Florida was the last team to go back to back, 06 07. UConn trying to do it here. They won the Big East Championship a few weeks ago, they won the regular season championship. They were chasing the Eastern Regional in Boston, they got that. And now, two minutes and 14 seconds away from another national championship, led by six at half. 36 to 30, and they've extended it to as much as 18 in the second half. 30 second timeout on the court. 33 points by Edie is the most points scored by a UConn opponent this year. I'm looking back on last year right now. This is the second 30 win season in a row for UConn. It's second time in their history that that's happened 97 98, 98 99 when they won their first championship. They won 30 plus. And the Huskies this year have set a record for assists. 710. They set a record for points scored, 3,095. And a program record for wins, 36. As they try to finish, try to finish the job. Edie's got 33 points now. Ten times he's done that. Right now, Jeff Anderson is trying to put Matt Painter back in the coaching box. <laughs> he's not having a lot of success. As Huskies looked in by Caravan to the backcourt to Newton. And Tristan dribbles across the timeline, guarded by Lance Jones. And Newton taking some time off the clock. We're down to two minutes to go. Newton starts left off a screen by Klingon. He fires in the far corner to Caravan, who drives base on Anidi. Gives it up to Klingon, and he hits a little floater. Donovan back off the bench, now has nine. UConn 71-56. Here's Braden Smith attacking Castle. And he missed the layup, but Edie dunks home the miss. 71-58, UConn. Minute 40 to go. Here's Caravan. Gets it into Newton. They double him. Back to Caravan. Ahead to Spencer. And Castle in the front court on the left sideline. They foul him. 
That is the ninth team foul on Purdue. And the realization may be setting in here. A minute 31 to go as UConn leads 71 to 58. Purdue in their first final game in 55 years, going back to 1969, had a tremendous year. They won 10 games against ranked teams. They've won 22 straight against ranked teams as Castle makes the first free throw. And Wayne, this is, this is a great stat. I mean, if you're a Purdue fan, UCLA in 71 to 74 was the last team to beat 22 straight ranked teams. Purdue's done, done that Purdue in the last Purdue. couple of years. Castle's second one rolls in off the front rim. And UConn leads 73 58. Braden Smith across the timeline, guarded by Castle. Attacking Klingon, puts up a little floater to Edie, and he dunks, and he's got 37 points. Well, that's the most points since Teddy Allen of New Mexico State scored 37 in the NCAAs against the Huskies three years ago. Caravan gets it into Newton, ahead to Castle, and we're into a minute five left. You kind of got to run some clock as Spencer has the dribble, and he'll give it to Caravan, and now 12 seconds away from a shot clock violation. They give it to Spencer. Back to Caravan. Caravan ducks into the paint. Goes alley-oop to Klingon. Klingon lays it in left-handed on the reverse, and that might be it. In the mix for six, might become six in just 35 seconds. Big Smith air ball. Out of bounds, UConn basketball with 36 seconds remaining. And Dan Hurley again clears the bench in a national championship game. He's getting them all in there. Apostolus Rumaglu, Castle, and Spencer hugging. Look at Coach Hurley playing to the crowd, waving the arms to that crowd behind the Yukon bench and beyond here at Glendale, Arizona. Klingon, big hug for bench. Castle. Caravan talking to Gillis, congratulating him on a great year. Big, big, huge hug for Tristan Newton as he comes off the floor. 20 points for Newton. Big chest bump for Spencer when he hit the coach. And Caravan with a hug. That was pretty funny. Dan, Hurley, Hurley actually recoiled backwards after that Spencer hit. Dan Hurley famously said, and I'll never forget this, talking about Alex Caravan, before he played a game, he said Alex Caravan will win championships, plural. Now, I thought that was a little a bit of a stretch, Dan, but guess what? He's well, delivered. He's in going to win his second championship in two years of college basketball. Five points all in the second half. Two for seven, one for six from three. But he does other things to make you win. He sets the right screen, gets the ball to the right people, and today he had to go against his toughest opponent defensively of the year, Edie. All right, Drew Hurley is going to dribble the ball. Or he's going to hold it. They're going to take a shot clock violation here. So this means he can't dribble out the clock. No, There's that can't. discussion again. Well, they got to turn it over. Right, but it'll be Peru ball. He's talking to his dad. <laughs> he said dribble the ball at least and then get the turnover. And now he pounds it down, and UConn has six seconds left before they celebrate. <laughs> Hurley and Luke Murray are pounding it. I mean, they're pounding it over on the sideline. And that'll do it. The final will be 75 to 60. And UConn, made for March? Yes, indeed. Made for April? Yes, sir. And in the mix for six, you bet. Now they've got six. The Huskies are six-time national champions. And it's time to celebrate UConn hoops at center court again. 75-60 will be the final. More confetti for this UConn men's basketball team. And for the first time, the Big East has won the NIT and the NCAA championship in the same season. All right, the players and uh, Matt Painter leaving, disappointed, I'm sure. He's had a great run at Purdue in 19 years, almost 500 wins, dominated the Big Ten, and gets to the final game but can't get the job done. UConn wins again by double figures, again by more than 13. They continue to add to that record. The confetti is flying. The record is 12 now, six last year, six this year. And nobody else 
has done it more than six times, and UConn's done it 12 times. Most consecutive wins by 13 plus. Indiana LaSalle, number two on that list. 75-60 is the final. Tristan Newton with 20. Steph Castle with 15. And stay with us. We're going to have post-game coverage. They're all in a huddle at center court, and Coach Hurley is leading the show. And how hard is it to get back to the tournament, to get back to the Final Four after winning a national championship? Extremely hard. UConn not only did it, they got back here, and they deliver another trophy to UConn basketball. And, Mike, I think it's time to talk legacy as we did before the opening tap. You, there may be other people with other opinions, including some of the guys on former championship teams, but there is no doubt in my mind this is the best team in UConn men's basketball history. When they came here to Phoenix, Glendale, they had to finish the deal, win two games. They've done that to me, no argument. This is a phenomenal team. They were great last year. Who would have thought this team could be better than last year's team? Nobody. But they are. Nobody. 37-3 and three is the final record. They finished with a 13-game winning streak. They had a 14-game winning streak earlier in the year. But that got broken at Creighton and Omaha. And they didn't lose it since then. They didn't lose another game. They came roaring out of that. And that's what they did. You know, when adversity came their way, and it came a couple times, they were able to overcome it and just play at the highest level. A very impressive championship win for UConn today. And Mike, to speak to that comparison we're just making last year versus this year, you start with what they lost off that team last year. Three future professionals, four if you count Joey Calcaterra as playing in the G League, as, by the way, is Adama Sanogo for the most part of the year as well. But the ability to not only restock, and with Coach Hurley now, we've learned he doesn't rebuild, he reloads. Cam Spencer, such a big part of the equation, a 44% three-point shooter as he winds up having one of the best single-season three-point shooting seasons in UConn history as he winds up tied for fourth all-time with 99 made three-pointers, Ray Allen number one on that list. And then the contribution of the freshman, Steph Castle. Castle got off to a slow start today after his 21-point career-high equaling game back on Saturday night. But Castle winds up with 15 points. He has five rebounds. He has three assists for the Huskies. But I think more than what he did at the offensive end, the way that Coach Hurley put Steph Castle on the other team's best guard offensively, and he often would just lock them up. That was a big part of what this UConn team began. And then the development of Donovan Klingon, a backup to Adama Sanogo last year. Klingon, the last month of the season, Klingon played lights out. And even going against Zach Eady, he had 11 yes. points on 5 of 8 shooting and fought through the foul trouble as Huskies win the national championship. All right, we're going to be joined here courtside as Tristan Newton goes over to celebrate with his family. And we're joined by uh, Steph Castle. And uh, Steph... Well, that was a spectacular season, a spectacular game. Uh, you didn't get up to a great start, but you made some huge plays to get this thing turned around. I had a lot of fun watching it, i got to say. I appreciate that, man. I mean, we worked so hard. So just to, just, just to see that our work paid off, it means everything, bro. Damn. <laughs> Steph, you're a little emotional right now. You, yeah, you, you, you tell the folks what's, what's going through your mind right now. This is a great moment. I mean, just... Just growing up as a kid, just watching all these games, just to just to be a part of it, it means it's been everything I could ask for. And just to do it with the group that we have, I mean, it just means everything. So, I mean, yeah, I am a little emotional, but, I mean, it's been, it's been a crazy ride, and I'm, I'm happy we got it done. And all year long, you did have a target on your back. I mean, you came in as a freshman, but this team is a defending national champs. To win 37 of 40 games in your freshman year, that is a special achievement. Yeah, I mean, I, credit to my teammates and my coaches. I mean, they always put me in the best positions to, to be successful. I mean, that, that, that guy did a lot of work tonight, too. So, I mean, a lot of credit to him. <laughs> yeah, Tristan Newton just walked by. How about him in, in big games? I mean, last year in the championship game, huge. Here tonight, 20 points. I mean, I mean, he, he's our point guard. I mean, I mean we, we're going to lean on him, I mean, through, through thick and thin. So, just to... I mean, just to see him have a performance like this on the, on the biggest stage when it means the most, I mean, that, that's all we can ask for from him, and he always executes for us. Steph, talk about the battle with Zach Eady inside, how UConn fought through the foul trouble, and even the job Alex Caravan did. But, you know, Eady had, his, Eady had his 37 points, but you guys found other ways to beat them. I mean, yeah, I mean, we, we knew that he was going to score. I mean, he's a great player, a lot of respect for him, but 
I mean, they, they can't beat us with only two pointers. So, I mean, we, we let him do his thing, and I mean, we got it going on offense, and now we're national champs. All right, Steph, we appreciate it. Go celebrate with your teammates, man. Love you. Thank, Thank you. you. I appreciate it. All right, Steph Castle, and UConn wins at 75 to 60. He's got to get up on that bandstand there and let the confetti come down. They got and their national the championship, championship hats and the yeah. shirts. A lot of the former UConn guys are on the on the court right now. Mecca Okafor, Charlie Villanueva taking photographs, and uh, Rudy Gay is there. It's just good to see these guys and. Uh, they're actually hugging Castle right yeah. now. Congratulations. Well, that's because he's there. He's not up on the podium yet because he was talking to us. But Six championships. Yeah. That's just an amazing number. They're tied with North Carolina now, Wayne. And it's all in the last 25 years. You've seen them all. And you've seen UConn prior to being a championship contender. This is maybe one of the most amazing 25-year runs compared to UCLA, I think. You can't top UCLA. You know, it's 67 to 73. They won six in a row. They won 64 65. I mean, UCLA is probably never going to be exceeded in terms of championships. But this one, number six in 25 years, that's pretty impressive. And I mentioned Teddy Allen of New Mexico State a couple of years ago. That's one that Coach Hurley, New Mexico State, lost first round NCAA in Buffalo a couple of years ago. Even here at the Final Four, Coach Hurley's made a couple of references to that game. That was a pretty tough time. Yes, you got to the NCAA, but you had a tough loss. You couldn't contain Allen, and they haven't lost an NCAA game since that time. There's Rudy Gay out there. I didn't see him yeah, here earlier. So. I just mentioned so, that. Yeah, yeah. Good yeah. to see him. Yeah, the member of the Huskies John of Paquette Honor. of the Big East. Obviously, the Big East very proud of what UConn's done here in the last couple of years. Now, Wayne, Villanova twice, UConn twice since yeah. 2016. Any more arguments about which conference is really the best in the country? I don't think there is. Do you? Four uh, Big East uh, championships since 2016. Four Big East champions, I should say, winning national championships. Huskies have a little dynasty going here. See if we can pick up, uh, well, that's Ernie Johnson up there on the stage. I don't know if we're going to be able to hear what he's saying, though, because the PA system when you're down here on the floor is <clears throat> horrible. Well, Dan Hurley's up there putting up six. I'll tell you what, when he put up five last year, it was an astounding achievement for him in his sixth year now. Meanwhile, uh, close to us, we have Mac Okafor taking selfies with the Husky mascot. UConn has now won 68 of their last 79 games played. How about that? 68 and 11 in the last two seasons. Back-to-back 30-win -back years and back-to-back -back romps through the NCAA tournament, Connecticut exceeding the Indianas of the world, the Dukes of the world, and now even with North Carolina with six championships. Huskies really only stubbed their toe once all year as they ended up losing three times, but the first loss to Seton Hall, Donovan Klingen got hurt, foot injury. He only played 14 minutes and scored 14 points, and they eventually got blown out there. And they got blown out by Creighton. The other one was at Kansas. Steph, or, uh, Cam Spencer was fighting through a number of different foot injuries in that game. Newton went off, but the Huskies had a close loss out there in a really tough place to play. And the fact that you could still stay with a team like Kansas at Allen Fieldhouse, I thought that was an indication right there how good this team is. Karan Butler has made an appearance here at uh, Phoenix at State Farm Stadium. And the... Uh, all that UConn royalty out there enjoying this. Dan Hurley being interviewed. We'll try to get to him a little bit later on. Wayne's going to head over. As Karan Butler might walk over and say hello to us, we hope. There's our guy who had one of the greatest NCAA tournaments in UConn history back in 2002. Yeah, All right, gonna he's going to join us here on the sidelines. <laughs> Karan Butler with a big, always the best smile, I felt, all these years. When you smile, man, you light up a room. But how about this? I mean, twice back-to-back -back championships. It, it's hard to imagine, really. Yeah, it's amazing. Um, you know, just to keep the consistency throughout the course of this run, you know, so many things that could have happened and lack of motivation, and you never seen that sink in. And these guys, you know, what Coach Hurley's been able to accomplish with these guys from a motivational standpoint, with complacency, it's just amazing. How about the job that UConn had to do against Zach Eady? 
who got his points, got his dunks, got guys in foul trouble, but they still persevered. What was your observation on the defensive effort they tried to do on Edie? Because that was a tough battle. Well, I, I, I look at it like this. From a playmaker standpoint, you got one individual on that team that's averaging seven assists or more, and everyone else is two, two assists or less. So you took away the playmaking out of it, and then obviously it's an algorithm to the game, and you just knew that, all right, Edie can't beat you alone. And we start executing our offense, moving the ball side to side, the wheel offense that we were running for over 20 years led to a victory. How about Klingon and, and the job he had to do tonight against that guy? And he hung in there. didn't foul out. I mean, Samson fouled out. But, man, that's a tough cover. Yeah, you know, meeting him in the restricted area, uh, right under the dots, and just trying to body him as much as, much as possible. The ball found him. And just trying to shrink the court. Uh, get deflections, uh, just making it difficult for him. And obviously he got away with a little contact. He was extremely aggressive, but two points, and we're just high-volume offense. They can't win. There wasn't enough possessions in the ball game for them to win this game. Karan, thoughts on the engine that makes UConn go, and that's Tristan Newton. Phenomenal job at point guard all year long, and he did it again tonight. You got 1,000 points in two years at UConn because of great guard play, and Tristan, just talk about how good he was in this tournament. You know, when you look at his game, and... The stats and stuff like that, obviously he's solid from an offensive standpoint, but it's just advantage, 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 point touch, creating offense, creating opportunities. And then on the defensive end of the floor, just having that right disposition that just trickle down to have a domino effect amongst the guys has been amazing to watch. And you got to have shot makers in today's college game, right? I mean, how about Cam Spencer? The, the, his ability to shoot outside, get in the lane, hit those the little runners. Range. I, I, th I thought that changed the game because Edie was in a drop coverage. And they made him pay the price for being in that coverage. And then all of a sudden, now in the second half, it opened up the backside lobs, and now you're finishing at the rim. Now they're like, they don't know what poison they want to live with. And that opened up the game up in the second half. Karan, you're with Miami. You know about NBA talent. A lot of talk that all five starters for UConn might be in the league next year. What are your thoughts on the individuals for UConn, maybe their professional futures, and maybe lottery picks? Yeah, listen, you know, uh, Castle, Newton, Clinging, like all those guys, I feel like, you know, when you win at this level, they're definitely ready. It's just a matter of when they decide to make that decision. Hopefully they come back. But, you know, with this program, we don't rebuild. We just reload. We'll be right back here. And Karan, to, to win six now. I mean, you're up there with, I mean, you you pass Duke now. Now you're tied with North Carolina. Is somebody going to respect UConn at some point here? We're what do you got to do? Hey, look, whenever you think you can, UConn, we're in a class by ourselves. You know, all the titles that we were winning over the last decade is just amazing to watch. Multiple coaches, Calhoun started this thing. And, you know, Coach Hurley's just leading the way, leading the charge going forward. And, Karan, remind them that it's six, but it was almost seven in 2002. If it weren't for a guy named Steve Blake. Yeah, in a, in a bad shot. I'm still mad at Johnny Salvi to this day. That possession, it should have swung and got to me somehow. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, man, it's, it's been amazing to watch. And uh, these guys just carrying the torch amazingly well. And I'm just so proud of all these individuals. I see the, the glow in all the families. You know, we're champions again. Yeah, Karan Butler, but there's one final thought. How about defending a championship, Karan, on this level in the NCAA tournament in college basketball today? That's not easy. Yeah, and listen, you talk about being in the East, being in New York, being in Boston, and then having the plane trouble. I'm hearing sleeping in beds that was too small. <laughs> I mean, everything, when you talk about adversity and conquering all of that, and then still being able to come out here on this platform with the pressure and the anxiety that comes with defending the title and still being able to, you know, live up to expectation and exceed them with hoisting up that trophy right now as they're doing on the stage. That's special. All right, Karan, we appreciate you, man. Thanks so much for joining us. Karan Butler. I'm going to have to grab some confetti. I'm yeah, taking right. some of this back to Atlanta. Well, there's a lot of that to get. <laughs> yeah, it's plenty so of good confetti. to see him. They, they announced the all-tournament team. Yes, Tristan Newton is the most outstanding player. It was Adama Sonogo last year, and this time it's Tristan Newton. He's joined in the all-tournament team by Cam Spencer, Steph Castle, Donovan Klingon, and Zach Eady. I guess when you score 37, you get on an all-tournament team. A final four team. Yeah, well, the, the team is still hugging up on the uh, the platform up there, but we'll try to talk to some of them as we, time goes on here. UConn wins at 75 to 60 uh, and a championship again, a 12-game, a 13-game winning streak to end the season, 
And they finish it in style against uh, Purdue, another team that Wayne was number one six weeks this year. UConn was number one, I think, uh, maybe ten weeks, something like that. So both of these teams are at the top of the game all year long. It came down to this, and UConn got the better of it. Well, if UConn hadn't dropped that game to Creighton back in February, they might have stayed at number one all that time. As athletic director David Benedict comes over to slap us some five here as the Huskies win back-to-back national championships, shooting 48% in each half. But, you know, it's funny that Purdue had had those embarrassing losses in the NCAA, including the 116 loss to Fairleigh Dickinson. They didn't embarrass themselves tonight. They were competitive. They just went against a better team. End of story. Yeah, one of seven from three tonight for Purdue, and uh, it wasn't good enough. UConn again with 18 assists. That's their average on the season, just eight turnovers as they win the ball game, 75-60. Going to take a break. Uh, Wayne, Wayne's going to go up there and try to talk to a couple of players. They're all on the stage, though. There's no, no, there's no uh, players right now. Eventually, they'll be back down there. We'll go over the highlights, and we'll talk about the stats and who knows? We'll maybe have another special guest here on the postgame show. Uh, stick with us. The Hard Auto Group postgame show continues in just a moment from Phoenix. UConn wins at 75 to 60 on Learfield. Calling all movers and shakers, those cranking around on crutches, the high heeled, the ready to be healed, the always on your feet. We are masters of mobility, healers of joints, muscles, bones. What moves you, moves us. We are Yukon Health Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, where we practice what we teach. Here, academic medicine, research, and clinical care unite as one relentless power. Because together, anything is possible. Visit us at health.yukon.edu. Planning a move? Let Lip and Cut Van Lines, the official mover of the Yukon Huskies, take the worry and stress out of your relocation. Whether you're moving across the country, across the world, or just across the street, Lip and Cut Van Lines will handle your packing, moving, and storage needs with the care and quality they deserve. If the Yukon Huskies football team can trust Lip and Cut to get their gear to the field on time, you can trust them to get your items where they need to be. Call Lip and Cut Van Lines today for a free estimate at 800-245-8563. Our coverage of the national championship game continues in 60 seconds. This is the Yukon Sports Network from Learfield. The impact of a meal goes well beyond feeding our bodies because feeling full can sound like this. How did the interview go? I did it. I got the job. 